what's up everybody back again with how we talk podcast that's right that's right man how you been i'm pretty damn good it's been a while once again it is it has been a while by the way my name is fidel from how we talk podcast and i'm israel or izzy izzy fitty and easy and and together easy. we're for, for real, real. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it is i was trying so hard not to do that fitty and easy show oh the again dude again, that, again i know dude. i, I gotta get, get it out of my head we're gonna get i gotta cease, get it out of my head cease to desist or cease and desist whatever that it's uh you know what uh, check it out hold on check it out i heard uh one of my buddies jamie ramos he's out there listening right now what's up jamie what's up jamie you know you know jamie yeah um he was telling me hey, i was listening to your show i've been listening to a lot of your episodes and all your shows right and I thought of a good drinking game. And I was like, all right, I want to hear this. What's the drinking game? Every, <laughs> every time, <laughs> listen up. Every time that you guys butcher a saying, like, uh, you can take a horse to the river, but can you make it eat? You know, like yeah, when you butcher something. We totally we butcher always, it. We butcher so many of them, dude. We totally so like, butcher any, it. Anytime you guys butcher, hey, take a shot. Take wow. a shot. So, hey, if you guys are out there listening right now and you guys are drinking, hanging out with your boys. Oh, they drink. They drink. Oh, yeah, 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 We're not drinking. I don't we're, drink. Who's going to point it out? You know, our guest isn't going to point it out. Yeah, us, yeah, right? yeah. That's right. You know, it's, it's them out there. Yeah, that, sure. They're going to do the drink. Take a show. drink and leave a comment on how many shots you t- <laughs> <laughs> That way we could go back and yeah. try to fix our mistakes. There you go. Hey, you know what? Speaking of comments, you guys, everybody, make sure that you guys share the video. So click the uh, subscribe button right there. Review, comment. Um those comments we read them we read all of those comments trust me we don't get too many so we read them all <laughs> <laughs> we read but all two all two of them <laughs> so when you guys comment on those uh we're gonna take the, we take you guys' advice your criticism as long as it's constructive criticism it's all good yeah feel free to ask questions too man we'll get we'll get to them yeah, we'll answer them for sure yeah definitely all right so what's up dude everything good yeah how, work, how you been? works good yeah i've been all right pretty busy pretty busy with work the mouth is back to normal mouth is back to normal um actually i i gotta go in and get you know the the crown and all that yeah. but yeah everything's all good now I could, that's good you look good i could do i you do thank you how's you look, that you look healthy am i shiny right now you are shiny dang did you just that's, have sex <laughs> no oh, okay. definitely not all right. um no i'm well i'm single again well, that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. Um, but you know what I wanted to talk about, dude? All this Mexico stuff going on. Which one? The, the, the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> the World Cup? The World Cup and causing an earthquake. Oh, yeah, that was pretty crazy. That was a while ago. That was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> well, we, I mean, we have, I haven't seen you since, so. Right, right, right. But uh, No, but that... The World Cup's cool. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, but do you watch soccer a lot? No, I don't. I don't. Are you one of those guys that only watch soccer during the World Cup? Yeah, I watch the World Cup. I watch the playoffs. What is that? The basketball? playoffs. Basketball? Oh, okay. Is that well, what it's called? I mean, the, the finals? No, the playoffs is in any sport, really. Oh, wait. The finals <laughs> is any, basketball? Any sport. Oh, what do they call it in basketball, then? You're talking about the championship? Like the game. The main game at the end of the season. No, the, no, no, no. For, the, for, for basketball. It's, Fi- it's a finals. championship. It's the finals. Okay. NBA, the, cha- the NBA finals. And in baseball? It's the World Series. You see what I mean? Okay, I got you now. Like I, I love the Dodgers. Yeah. And I'm actually going to a game tomorrow, but uh, I love the Dodgers, and uh, I watch. I don't watch it all the time, but I watch the the World Series. Okay. You know, and then baseball. Baseball, Dodgers. and then I, you have Dodgers, right there. and then uh, that's right, and then I watch the basketball one. The basketball the, one the is championship the championship finals, finals, NBA right? finals. Yeah. Um, which was go which, Kobe. Go Kobe. Kobe's retired. All right. But, uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, I thought Go Kobe was. Like, hey. When you said Go Kobe, I thought you meant you meant like Go Kobe was like the new Go Pro kind of camera. Oh no, no no no! <laughs> My brother-in-law would be Go hating Kobe. me right now. He's a big Lakers fan, so he wouldn't know who, who is real. Yeah, yeah, oh, huge, yeah. huge Lakers fan. Like nice. you talk to him while the game's on, and pointless. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, uh, I mean, the NBA Finals uh, this year was terrible. It was a sweep. Who, who played? Four games. Golden State Warriors. That's uh, sh- not Shaq. Uh, <laughs> LeBron, LeBron. No, he did, he he's the only one that played. It was it was Golden State Warriors versus LeBron James. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> and that's it, dude. But, and the little guy with the eyes. With the little guy with the eyes. Yeah, Steph Curry. Steph Curry. Uh-huh. Yeah, with that's the curly the hair. Yep. Steph Curly. Steph Curly. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, man. I didn't watch it, but I knew that. that Nobody Joseph, did. Nobody watched it. Because of the. Because they knew who? it was gonna be a sweep. It was, oh, okay. It was, it was terrible. And then, okay, and then the World Cup is soccer. Yeah. I, I, I'll watch, like, Mexico games because, you know, while well, I'm brown. Right. But 
that's that's who I like I've never watched soccer dude yeah. and I was watching the game the other day I think a couple guys were watching the game before work but I was like yeah like I was like like into it but I'm I don't know who was yeah. playing yeah you didn't even they're know saying who. Chicharron was passing it over here and this this and that and Chicharito not Chicharron <laughs> that, guy, yeah. Chicharito. <laughs> that guy Chicharron and then, and then I was like yeah hey what's up pork skin <laughs> <laughs> pork skin's passing it you know no but um oh, man. I watched it in Spanish, which I don't know Spanish, but it's just more it's way intense. More exciting. It's way, way more, more exciting. intense. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, watch. You know what? Watching, um, watching soccer in Spanish is like watching a horse race. They're all. It's just always talking. The announcers just always talking. There's no pause. You know when <laughs> true, you're watching like uh, you're watching a uh, like American uh, football, like our yeah. football, uh, soccer. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's way more pause in it. You know, they, they, time, they let they let it sit there, you know, they make a comment, let it sit. Nah. In Spanish, it's just quick, quick, quick. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I can't do it. But, you know, Andres Cantor, one of those, the famous, uh, yeah. the goal, no, I don't know that really long. Oh, okay, you know, yeah, like, yeah. You've heard it. Commercials and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's just Mexican soccer. <laughs> yeah, so is. anyway, I, I'm watching that, but. Um, when you first asked about Mexico, I thought you were going to go and talk about the. The kids? Yeah. I thought you were going to do that. And then I, I made it as a goof. I went with World Cup. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about the kids. What what do you think? What's your whole thought process on that? With the kids? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's fucked up. It's messed up? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, he signed it off already. It's not going to happen. Yeah, he just yeah, needed yeah, to yeah. self-promote himself. It's all good. Yeah. I saw a picture. I don't know if you saw it, but it, of that little girl in the red uh, crying. Wasn't that in the movie uh, Schindler's Schindler's List? Schindler's List, but yeah. they they. they they split the picture. Oh, they kind of spliced it with the new uh, one with a little, I don't know. She's Mexican, little Hispanic girl with a red shirt. Not and they kind of made that comparison. Okay, I was like, oh yeah, they did. Take it's pretty. Kids, it, yeah. It's pretty. It, it sucks. I mean, it, it, it does. I mean, suck. just to take those kids away. Uh, I saw, uh, the actor uh, from uh, Star Trek, George, Spock. Nah, man, George Takai. Takai. George Takai. Yes. Oh, Jap- yeah. Japanese. Yeah. You no, know, he made a comment about that. He said uh, even when. In, during the Japanese in, uh, encampment that, or whatever, he said even then Hiroshima they, was it Hiroshima? Mm-hmm. Yeah, was it Hiroshima? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Even then, they didn't take away the kids. They didn't separate the kids from the parents. You know, and that was back then. Yeah. So I mean, well, I mean, they had swords and stuff. They did have swords. I think. If If I may just chime in, of for course. Yeah. Uh, George Akai was actually from East LA, born and raised in East LA. Oh, was he so, really? Yeah, he's got uh-huh. a he's got a really good uh, tie with the. With the Latino community, so yeah, you know, for him to to, to get involved and talk about it, you mm-hmm. know, hey, thumbs up for that, you know, that's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, he's uh, you know, he's very um, he's out there. He's very, uh, I think lately he's been very political oh, about yeah. about you know his statement with the whole uh, lesbian gay community type of thing. So you know, good like you said, good for him. You yeah, know? and yeah. he's representing East LA. That's cool, man. That's you awesome. Know? Very. That's pretty cool. But yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. Yeah. And well, you know what? This is a perfect time to segue into our guest here. Um, we have today Jimmy Sauces. Jimmy Sauces. That's Jimmy, hey, no, Jimmy Sauces. Jimmy Sauces. <laughs> sauces. Sauces. Jimmy Sauces. You know what? <laughs> First of all, let's let's find out before we even get into this whole introduction. Let's find out how you got your name, Jimmy Sauces. Wow. That happened in, uh, well, first of all, thank you guys for having me on the podcast. Of course. Uh, it's, it's an honor. Welcome. I, I've been watching the podcast on YouTube and I love it. So thank, thank you guys you. for having me. Appreciate I, it. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a friend of mine from uh, Miami, when we were out in Miami, by the name of Luis Calvan, if I may add his name, he's a uh, owner of a, of a restaurant. He's a chef slash owner. He's from Jersey. He gave me the name uh, due to the fact that he says my name was boring. <laughs> and I said, yeah, my name's boring. I go, what do, you, what do you mean? He says, your name's boring. Yeah. So he said he's going to give me a name. I said, all right, well, what is it? He says, Jimmy Swasses. <laughs> Jimmy Swasses. Uh, yeah, that was it, Jimmy Swasses. And I thought, okay, that's kind of funky, but... Yeah. Went home. I told my wife, and um, she thought it was funny. And a couple of days later, I just went on Facebook and I uh, changed my name to from my original name to Jimmy Sauces, yeah. and uh, it's kind of taking a a life of its own. If you, if you know, you will. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> so he goes, this, this guy makes sauces. His his name's Sauces. That's it. That's it. Yeah. What so. would what would your jersey name be? <laughs> my jersey name. Is that where we're gonna go with Jersey name? Like the I mean, Jer- that's where he got uh, it. You know, the guy was from Jersey, so I'm sure from New Jersey. So there. All right. So my Jersey name will let's see. I don't know, dude. I'm pretty boring. So my name would be like <laughs> Fitty B for, Fitty bo- B. for boring. 
Very boring. Very, 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 very boring. Hey, your name's too boring. You know what? I had to. I had to talk to Luis Galvan and see yeah, if you yeah, could yeah, hook yeah. it up with the jersey name. Oh, so, man, he, yeah, yeah. you listening he, out there, Luis? Uh, hook it up with the jersey yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. gave me the name, and I just, I just went with it. I just thought it was a cool name. I thought it was funny. Um, it said, rolls. Hey, yeah, it yeah. rolls. Yeah. Well, you know, I, 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 I make sauces, you know, and that's what I do. That's that's my, that's my thing. I do sauces. I do a whole bunch of sauces, and he thought it would be really cool to, you know, give me the name Jimmy Sauces, and I thought, all right, I'll take it. Right on. So we kind of went from that. I like it. You know, that's two cool. and a half years later, I still got the name, and people identify me as it, Jimmy Sauces, and yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I dig it. You know, I go somewhere and people come up and what's up, Jimmy Sauces? I'm like, oh hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Like I'm not really, I'm not used to it yet. I'm getting there, but yeah. well, you know, we'll see what happens. That's cool. I like it. You know, so um, you your shirt right there says "Up in Smoke." Your bottles right here that we have here, your sauces. Some of your sauces they say "Up in Smoke." So is that the name of the the company? Just the sauces here, or do you have a catering business? No, uh, excuse me, Jimmy's uh, Up in Smoke Tacos is a name that uh, we created uh, years ago, and a lot of people get the wrong impression that we got it from the movie, which is not true. Okay. Uh, Chichin Chong movies. Yes. Okay. A lot of people think that, you know, I'm from East LA, born and raised. And uh, a lot of people think that I got it from the movie Chichin Chong, but it's not true. I got it from, uh, long story, at a baseball park. Mm -hmm. You know, from doing a lot of this, yeah. my grill was uh, burning up. And one of the parents asked me that, uh, well, I actually pointed it out that my grill was on fire. He says, hey, your grill's up in smoke. And I turned around and I ran back to it because I was talking to people, which I do all the time. And, um, it stood with me that 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 moment running back to the grill just your grills up in smoke i yeah. thought that was a great great name and i sat back and i wrote the name down about sheesh i would say honestly honestly truthfully i wrote the name down on a piece of paper about 100 times yeah up in smoke tacos up in smoke tacos up in smoke tacos i wanted to call it something else and my wife which is right here she <laughs> she didn't like the name of it what i wanted to call it yeah. i wanted to call it la street style tacos and she says no it's not good when I showed her the name Up and Smoke Tacos, she said, that's it. That's the one. That's it. Yeah. So we went to the Hall of Records and uh, checked it out, and uh, it wasn't taken. So I grabbed it. Nice. I grabbed it. So um, that's how the name came, came about, and uh, we, we patented the name, I want to say, a year ago. The name was patented. So we have the name uh, Up and Smoke Tacos, and uh, started doing catering. You know, that's how we started. Well, yeah. We're still doing catering, which is our... Our thing that we love to do, but catering is the, the thing that that's we, your passion. It's a passion. I love cooking. Cooking is something that uh, I look forward to every time I do an event. I love the smiles on people's faces. I love the reaction that I get from people. I just love it. I yeah. just love it. I love the smiles. You know, when people come back and say, "That was a great taco. That's amazing salsa." Yeah, I, I've heard it thousands and thousands of times, honestly. And to this day, I can still hear it and go, "Wow, that's awesome." Nice. You know, so I enjoy it. How is your taco different from all the others? street tacos here la street tacos that you wanted to name it how is your taco different i mean your name alone is different so now your tacos got to be different too it's got to stand out from all the other tacos right, right. how does it stand out so what we did was um me and my wife rocio we love love to eat out you know it's just something we love to do we like to go out to my favorite food is asian food it's japanese food i love the teriyaki i love anything asian <clears throat> so what we did was we decided one day we were sitting at a at a restaurant in Alhambra, mm -hmm. and we're having dinner, and I was eating the teriyaki glaze, the teriyaki cabbage, off of my plate, my dinner plate, and I remember looking at her and my wife and going, "Hey, this would be great on a taco," and she's like, "Really? You think so?" And I said, "Yes, it'd be great." I went home, we made uh, some tacos the next day, and we put the uh, cabbage mm -hmm. glaze, the teriyaki glaze, on top of a taco, so they were pretty much teriyaki tacos. Yeah. And so we invited a bunch of friends over a couple of days later. We had the onion cilantro, the, the traditional. And once they tried it with the teriyaki glaze, the onion cilantro was still there. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah. Everybody ate the teriyaki glaze with the cabbage mixed. And so um, that was it. That was something that we created. I mean, not created, but something we did. And it just kind of took a life of its, of, of its own. You know, it just kind of took form and stuff. And we did some events and people were asking, well, where's the onions? Where's the cilantro? Well, we're doing something different. And from that day... More and more people started identifying to it, just kind of going at it and just really just like, oh, these are good. Yeah. These are good. So now what we do, we put the teriyaki glazed cabbage, onion cilantro, and in our sauces. Okay. So we're different from the uh, traditional onion, cilantro, stuff like that. How Did you find it difficult at all to convince people that your taco was better or was it just in the, in the, the first bite 
No, it was uh, at first bite. Boom, love. You know the, the, the <laughs> love, love at, at first, first bite. bite. See, love at first that's bite. another drinking one right there. I messed it up. Love at first bite. <laughs> I said drink? it backwards. Genius. <laughs> well, you know, it was. Um, I want to say it wasn't so much of a trying to convince them. It was just more to, pretty much like just try it. Yeah. You know, it's you, you can't convince anybody if somebody's got their set ways. They're going to eat or they're going to do what they want to do. So I, you got that old school mentality of I want the tacos with my cilantro or, you know, with yeah. the onion. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So being out of East L.A., people are traditionally into their cilantro and onion. Yeah. And we did an event one day. Me and my wife, we had done an event. And it was an event for uh, a lot of older gentlemen from Mexico and, and women, of course. And they came up and asked us one day. They, well, they came up and asked and said, hey, where's the onion cilantro? And I said, well, we don't do that. We're doing it. This is something different. And we got a lot of frowns, you know, we got a lot of people looking at us kind of like, whoa, I don't know about this, you know, and just yeah. kind of walked away and stuff, grabbed their food, but walked away. Well, after they tried it, they came back and they were like, oh man, this is good. Yeah. You know, this is really good. And I was like, so we walked out of there that day and we were like, wow, they really, they really liked it. Something different to them. Yeah. It's away from the norm. It's away from the, the traditional onion cilantro. You know what I'm saying? So we took something different. But we added the onion cilantro because people kept asking for it. So we're like, well, you know, we can't just do the cabbage. Let's do the onion cilantro. So now our tacos have the teriyaki glazed cabbage, onion cilantro, and then our sauces. So we're set aside. And the way we cook our meats, uh, we double marinate our meats. We use our sauces that we have here on the table okay, to cool. use as a, a tool for the, you know, as we're cooking on our food. Do you typically use the, uh, your, like, you know, you go to a taco or, or party and they have a taquero? You got your three meats, your chicken, your pastor, and your asada. Is that typically what you guys are doing, or do you have a different type of meat that you throw in there every once in a while, or or you strictly use beef only? Right now, we're, we're doing the traditional three meats. Okay. Uh, al pastor, pineapple pork, uh, chicken, and beef. Uh, we do a calabacita taco that we use calabacita, red onions, and a little bit of yellow squash. So it's a, ve it's a vegan. So it's your, not your, a vegan, it's a veggie. A veggie, a ve a your veggie taco. taco. And I use some of the... Uh, up in fuego salsa to go on top of it to give it an added spice and flavor and stuff but um i want to add more vegetarian tacos to our menu i really just i love veggies yeah so i want to i want to go ahead and explore more and give people what they want i don't want to just keep it limited to just beef no right. i want to explore and do other things as well so i mean especially right now when you have so many people that are trying to do the whole vegan or veggie and and only veggie so you have to cater to so many nowadays that when you have a, a, a taquero, a, you know, and you come out and all they have is tacos, I'm pretty sure you get a lot of people that just want the quesadillas, you know? Right, right. Because you don't have that on your menu. We, but now that you, like you say, with your calabazas. Yeah, we, we get a lot of people that come up and they'll ask us. Um, which hey, is squash. Yeah, do you have, do you have, uh, do you have a vegan, uh, vegetarian taco? And I look at them straight in the eye and I'll go, yes, we do. And they're like, wow, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, come on over. Nice. And then they'll get it. And I let them know. So our up in fuego salsa is no animal byproducts, fat, or anything like that. Strictly just veggies and, you know, and salts and peppers and whatever we put in there. I'm not going to give the whole secret out. Oh, but, no, of course not. Yeah. But um, our, our other stuff has a little bit of uh, cream in it, you know, uh, dairy products. Mm -hmm. So I like to let them know that I'm using strictly non-vegan, not non-animal products on their, on their food. And that really turns people on. Their eyes open up. Like, yeah. wow, you know, great. So I haven't gotten the whole vegan thing because it's a little tougher to get into. So I want to do the vegetarian first, and then of course maybe later on down the line I can you know once we expand our menu a little bit more, I want to do the vegan, you know. So I want to I want to go ahead and and let everybody try up and smoke tacos, not just the meat eaters. You know what I mean? I yeah. just want to yeah, have everybody yeah. try it. What What do you th in your opinion? What do you think makes your taco your taco? You know, a lot of people. Every time we do an event, people always come up and just give us a smile, give us a thumbs up, and and tell us their our food is great. Me, personally, I put care into what I do. I put love. I mean, and you'll hear that from a lot of people. And, and you know, people can say, oh, I do this, I do that. Me, personally, I'm going to feed you what I'm going to put on my plate. I'm not going to feed you something that I wouldn't eat. You know, I'm not going to do that. If I'm going to eat it, I'm going to make sure you eat it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. So I put love and, and, and passion into what I do as far as my food goes. I've been to a lot of restaurants where I'll sit down and I'll have their food and I'll be like, this guy's just working for a paycheck. You know what I mean? He, he's, he's just working to make that money. Yeah. He doesn't care about what he's doing. I don't care if you're getting paid $2 an hour to $10, 20 $30 an hour. You make that food like if you were feeding your kids and your wife. You know, you make it beautiful. You just give it your all. And I see a lot of people are not doing that. Me, personally, I want to make sure that 
every time I cook my tacos or cook my food, it, it, it gives it, you know, there's love in it and people just see it and come back and, you know, you ever, you ever heard that song by uh, Bon Jovi? What is it? Uh, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And he says, I've seen a million faces and I've rocked them all. Well, I've been doing this for eight years now, I want to say, and I've been on the road. I was in Miami. I was in Mississippi. I, I was touring in a food truck and I've rocked a lot of faces. You know, literally, I've mm -hmm. rocked a lot of faces because they would always come back and give me thumbs up or, hey, chef, you know, give me the thumbs. Yeah. And, and I would just turn around and be like, yes, I yeah. nailed it. And that gave me the inspiration to keep going, to care about my food, not just because there's a line, oh, shit, get it out, get yeah, it out. Right. No, no. Make sure that every every taco, every quesadilla, everything that we serve is top notch. It's just a thing of pride. It's a pride. It's having pride in your work. <clears throat> Excuse me, yes. It's pride. It's, it's all about pride because, like I said, other chefs that work at restaurants are working for paychecks. Mm -hmm. They don't care about their audience. They don't care about who they're feeding because they're behind the kitchen. Yeah. They don't care. They don't get to see the people. I get to see the people face to face and they know me. They know my reputation. I'm going to give it my best. I don't care if you're an old lady or a young kid. I'm going to make sure you get you get the best from us. Yeah. And that's what we're all about. And if you if you look at us on Yelp, on Instagram and, and all the social medias, you'll see all the good reviews we've got. And to this day, you know, we, we don't have any bad reviews. That's good. That's and good. so to me, I want to keep it like that. So I'm going to do my I'm going to do my 100 percent every time that I'm out there and giving people what I got, you know, so yeah. I'm going to have to try these tacos. I'm getting hungry <laughs> <laughs> just so I could leave a Yelp review because I got a really cool reputation on my Yelp reviews. Awesome. Awesome. Do you really? But yeah, I tell the honest truth, man. Who's that guy? <laughs> yeah. All right. That guy. All right. But uh, yeah. yeah, dude, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, our, our Yelp reviews to me are just they're 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 gold. You know, I mean, I really love the fact that people give us good reviews and 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 just there's so many people out there just giving us referrals to and referrals and referrals and stuff. And I'm like, wow, really? You know, so I go back and I every time I make a quesadilla, I make a tacos or we cook, it's got to be 110 percent. Yeah, I'm not gonna cut corners and be like, oh, I'm gonna do this, do that, because there's a long line. No, I had a lady at a, at a gig one day uh, recently. Um, we, we had done a gig and, uh, and there was a long line, you know, cause it was, uh, it was, a uh, it wasn't a catered gig. It was actually a, uh, it was a vending event. So it was at a music hall mm -hmm. and this lady's like, Hey man, we're waiting for our food, man. The, the line's long, the line's on. And I looked her dead in the eye and said, you know what? I'll be right with you, but good food takes time to prepare. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden from, from, she just went, oh, yeah. you know what? She went, I like that. And yeah. she stood in line. And she had her food. She came back and said, thumbs up, man. I said, thank you. And that, to me, <laughs> shows people that yeah. we care about what we do. And For that's sure. all. Of, it's, it should be that in every, everything. But food is, is, is a passion to me. Yeah. It really is. That's very important. Yeah. That's sure. cool. How did you, how did you uh, ultimately get into <laughs> tacos? Or Jeez. did it start out tacos? Did it start out sauces? Well, no, no. You know, it's funny. Um my youngest son, I'll tell you a funny, I'll tell you a funny story. My youngest son, his name is Jaden. He tells me, Dad, when you were younger, did you ever think you'd be selling tacos? And I looked, <laughs> I, looked, I looked him dead in the eye, and I looked at, and he he was small at the time, and I looked at him, and I started laughing. I said, Never in a million years. Yeah. I never thought, you know, I'd be a taquero. No, hell no, I'm not going to be doing that. What happened was, um, I'll tell you the story. It's a great story. It's a really good story. Uh, my daughter, my wife, and myself. Um, my wife is here, of course. She's in the background. Yeah. Rocio, I love you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> um, we managed baseball. We were managers of a baseball team. We were actually not, it wasn't our, our, our it wasn't uh, what I want to say. It's not that we w didn't want to do it. They just didn't have enough coaches. So they kind of went up to us and said, hey, guys, would you guys mind uh, managing a, a baseball team? And I was like, wow, I don't have it. This for, for Justin? No, for my daughter Jamie. Oh, for okay. for Jamie, yeah, Jamie. Justin was playing balls at the time, but he was playing uh, uh, with another coach, and so they didn't have a, a coach or uh, a manager or a team on. So we kind of said, um, "Sure, you know, let's go ahead and do it." And so um, it was funny because one day they had said uh, they wanted to raise money for the baseball team because they yeah. wanted jerseys, they wanted other things, and so we're like, "Okay." So they were they're throwing ideas at us. We had a little taco cart that we had purchased in East LA. It was like about 150 bucks, yeah. and it had a little hot dog sign on it. It was really cool, and uh, I I had bought it, and I bought another one. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I said, you know what? I want to rent these out, you know, for 50 bucks a day or whatever. Rent them out, 
and <laughs> I had put them on Facebook. I had put them on before Instagram. I put them on Facebook, and I did a couple other social media. I guess whatever was out there was available. MySpace. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think my, my wife had. I think my wife had MySpace, <laughs> and uh, we, we didn't get no response back. Nobody was like, "Hey, man, I like to rent that from you." And I'm like, "Oh, man." So they asked us again if we can do, um, you know, to raise money for the kids. And I said, "Yeah, sure." You know, what can we do? So we said we're gonna do a. Um, we're gonna do hot dogs with bacon. Yeah. So we had a hot sauce, one hot sauce, almorco hete style hot sauce that we had that we had made in the past, and it was good. You know, I thought it was good. Yeah. So we had done it. <clears throat> And uh, we put it together that day. We took it out to the event, and everybody else had their hot sauces on the table. Well, at the end of the event, we made about 800 bucks for the team. And I looked at my wife, and I said, man, we can make money from this? Are you kidding me? And we looked back at the salsas that we made, and it was gone. And everybody yeah. else's salsas was on the table. Yeah. And I looked at her, and I said, man, they, they finished the salsa. They loved our salsa. Yeah. And we kind of giggled it off like nothing, you know? And then so I told some friends from work about what we did. And uh, one of them says, um, hey, I'd like to hire you for, the for an event, the gig. And I was like, nah, man, I don't do that. He goes, come on, man. I, I pay my guy so-and-so X amount of dollars. And I said, well, you know what? Let's go and give it a shot. Yeah. So I did. I did a party for away from the family, away from our friends, just like a whole complete stranger. We did a taquisa, yeah. you know, and they loved it. And that day, this lady comes up to me. She's a much older Mexicana lady. She walks up to my wife and says, who here makes a salsa? Yeah. And I, I, I'm like, oh, shit. I got <laughs> She's going to judge you. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. Did I, what did I do wrong? Yeah. And I say quiet. And she goes, oh, he does. She points at me. I'm like, she eyes are like, you like, 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 yeah, deer's in the light. I'm like, yeah. is everything okay? And she looks at me. She goes, mijo, in Spanish. She says, mijo, keep doing what you're doing. Because she says, mijo, keep doing what you're doing. Porque vas para arriba. Yeah. I looked at her and I said, wow, thank you. And she walked away. So I told my friend that he was the host of the party. I, he comes up walking up, and I said, hey, Joseph, who's that lady right there? And he goes, why? I said, well, she just said something to me. What? I said, no, no, she said something positive, something good. Yeah. Oh, that's my aunt. And I go, what? he goes, what did she say? And I told him what she said. And then he says, well, you know, she has a couple restaurants, Mexican restaurants, oh, yeah. successful. I don't know the name. I didn't question it. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and I said, wow, really? He goes, what did she tell you? And I told him what she said. And he goes, wow, if she told you that. And she knows what she's talking about. Yeah. And that was kind of like the, the, the landslide of that, that whole thing. Once she said that, it's like she gave me the, she, she like ordained me or something. Mm -hmm. She kind of gave me that, the, the sword, you know, yeah. or something yeah. like yeah, yeah, Boom. Yeah. Everything just kind of. La bendición. La bendición. Exactly. Everything just started kind of falling into place from there. And before you know it, we were just like getting phone calls left and right. This is before all really social media. The only thing that was available was MySpace. That w MySpace was available had just kind of transformed into Facebook. So it was kind of like taking off that. Yeah. But it was word of mouth back then. It was really word of mouth. Yeah, so, I mean, it only takes one person to start that snowball, right? And then yeah. once you, that snowball effect, it just keeps going and going and going, right? Oh, like, yeah. Did you, uh, is this full-time? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> when did you When did you decide to? Well. That's a pretty big step. That's a big risk. Scary. Not only that, I mean, yeah. I'm sure you, you already had your family set up and, and then we didn't even get into it. What were you doing before this? I mean, as, as far as your full time, if you're comfortable talking no, no, about I'm, that. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, no. It, what happened was after we started doing these events, um, the more and more people started calling us. I mean, just literally just like our phone was off the, off the hook. Bring, bring, and ring. And yeah. she was, my wife was taking phone calls and I was taking phone calls and we're taking all these descriptions. So we didn't really know how to gauge these events or how much to charge. We weren't like, this is something that we weren't looking to get into. It yeah. just kind of landed on our, on our lap. And so we didn't really know how to gauge these events. And I was like, well, this is the price or this is the price or this is that. You know, we didn't have a set price or anything until a couple years went down the road. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got to. And so what happened was um, I remember I remember just uh, just doing events and then just going at it. And, and, and I, I was working a full time job. I was working as a truck driver. Mm -hmm. I was literally a truck driver yeah. working 15, 16 hour days. I get home tired as heck you know and i'd go to the store and buy some ingredients and i'd go home and make salsas fresh salsas for the for the next day yeah you know so i would get to get you know i would get home start chopping onions and stuff and it'd be like two in the morning my kids my wife worked at, at costco at the time my kids were small they were asleep so they were all tired i'm like half asleep you know and i'm looking around going dude i don't need to do this i have a full-time job my wife's got a full-time job she yeah. works at costco we do pretty good yeah but my passion 
kept driving me to say, no, keep going, keep going. There were so many times I wanted to give up and just say, no, it's too much work. Yeah. I got a full-time job. My wife had my back and she says, no, keep going. Keep, what are you, what are you doing? Don't give up. And I was like, I would look at her and I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, don't give up. So working a 16 hour day, a 12, 13, 14 hour days, you know, on a, on a daily basis to come home and I had the weekends off. So this is a weekend gig. And this is something we did. And before you know, we got more and more booked, more people hired us to my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And if I can give him a shout out, Angel Basura. What's up, brother? What's up, Angel? What up? Yeah. He calls me one day and says, hey, man, you know what? Uh, there's nothing like this in Miami. And I was like, well, what do you mean? There's, there's no tacos out here. Yeah, they got Taco Bell and they got a few other places that you wouldn't eat at. Trust me. It's yeah. no good. <laughs> and, um, you know, so he says... Um, you know, let's get it going out of here. You know, so I was like, all right. I thought he was joking with me. I thought he was just, yeah, whatever, blowing smoke up my butt, you know, yeah. if I can say that. And um, what happened was um, he got a plan together. He did it, you know, got everything together and we took off to Miami, you know. And so it, it, it all kind of fell into place. It wasn't meant to be. It just kind of fell into place. All because of the baseball park for the kids, the girls. Yeah. And we barbecued for them. To this day, this is funny because these girls are 21, 20, 21, 22 years old. Yeah, 20 to 21, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. And to this day, they still say that they we were the best coaches that they've ever had because they've been playing ball since they were kids, yeah. little kids. So, you know, they were like in their 13, 14 years old at the time. For them to say that about us and still remember us because we cooked for them all the time. Yeah. You know, it just goes back to the passion of food, the passion of of just cooking. It's just, it's fun. A lot of people might not see that, I mean, but in my eyes, cooking's an art, man. It really is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's food. It's it's it's, it's culinary. It's, it is an art. It's culinary arts, right? It is. It so, is. I mean, it's it is an art. Just like you said, it, there's not just putting something together really quick. You know, it's knowing the right spices. I mean, I don't cook, so I don't know. I mean, I'm just <laughs> talking out of my butt, right? But I watch a lot of, a lot of those cooking shows and... It's it's crazy what they can do. You know, it's funny. I don't I don't watch any shows like that. I really don't. Yeah. I don't want to get inspired by anybody else. I kind of inspire myself, mm -hmm. and that's how I. That's my role. I don't go on YouTube. I don't go on on Pinterest or any of those things to learn a recipe. Yeah. The recipes come from here, and it's crazy. And I and and, and I'll tell you a funny story. My mother, my mother, she's she's the biggest critic. Yeah. Aren't they all? Oh, <laughs> my mother. Just kidding, mom's que out tiene there. Mucha sal, que tiene mucha pimienta, yeah, que yeah. Tiene mucha, oh, my mom can go on and on, and I can just go, oh, my gosh, mom, <laughs> stop. Please just eat the food. Yeah. So my mom's the biggest critic, and she can she can be pretty brutal. She can be pretty brutal. And, and uh, you know, one day we're sitting there, and we're making, you know, I made some fish tacos. Well, actually, not even make them. I bought some fish tacos. Yeah. And the salsa that we bought from the truck, or I was in the truck, it was a complimentary salsa, you know? Mm -hmm. And I went home, and I, and, and I opened it up, and I, I took a taste, and I'm like, it, it doesn't taste good. It's yeah. agrio. And I told my mom, hey, mom, try it. She's like, why? I go, just try it. Tell me if it's good. She goes, she looks, and, and mine, my mom's 80-something years old. Yeah. She looks at me, she goes, well, you're the salsa guy. <laughs> okay, and I put a smile on my face, yeah. right? And I said, well, try it, mom. And she goes, yeah, it's a little bit bitter. So we start talking about salsas, and I, I tell my mom, you know, it's funny, mom. I didn't learn this from you. Not no disrespect, but I didn't learn this from you. I didn't learn this from my grandmother or my tias or my tios or anybody else. I learned this because of me. Yeah. I learned it. And she looks me dead in the eye, and, and I'll never forget it. You know, we're sitting at the kitchen table at the house, and she looks me dead in the eye. She says, "You ha tienes un regalo de Dios. You have a gift of God. Yeah. And I thought to myself, wow. That's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. And I took that, and I'm 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 real spiritual, you know. I I pray every day. I do. I pray for my family. I pray for my kids. I pray for my friends. I pray for people that are no longer my friends. I yeah. pray for them because wow. I have a big heart. Yeah. I, you know, I, I pray for people that are no longer my circle because of stupid choices that they made. But whatever, yeah. that's a whole different story. That's another right. subject. It's another podcast. <laughs> it's another podcast. Yeah, we'll get on. But I still pray for them. Yeah. Because I love to pray for people, you know, and I just. I feel the power of God is great, and, and He's given me a honestly, He's given me the, the biggest uh, gift I can ever have. Because yeah. in, in years ago, I could tell you, if you were telling me I'm going to be making these great salsas that literally have been gone around the world, our salsas, if I may just add, our salsas just landed a few cases just landed in Bolivia. Oh wow! In Bolivia, cool. are you Damn. kidding me? The Bolivians, and, and, yeah. And I'm like, 
I, I would never susp- I would if you were telling me one day your salsa is gonna be in Bolivia and I'm like yeah right <laughs> yeah so that to me that's that's a blessing yeah I, I couldn't ask for worldwide anything. dude you're yeah, worldwide yeah yeah and it's getting there better and better but it's a it's a blessing from God and I just enjoy it I, yeah. I love making sauces just something I'm passionate about I, I created a new salsa yesterday like I was telling you a little, oh, like yeah, earlier the, the, yeah, the, the zucchini Oh, I didn't want to say it. I was like, I don't know if it's special. No, I'm no, no, kill no. It for you. I just created it, and and, and 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 you know, like I always do. And me and my wife has this little rule, where if she tries it, she gives me a high five. It's on. And if we don't high five each other, yeah, it's okay then. Yeah, she doesn't hurt your feelings like doesn't that. Doesn't hurt no? my feelings. Just, no, I, you got the high five on the zucchini. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. I want her to be honest with you. Me, you know, she, yeah, yeah. you know, she's she's me and her are part of. We're, we're the owners of this business. Yeah. And it's something that we created. You know. I'm the mastermind behind it, but she's also my rock. She's the one that tells me, no, you need this or you need that. So I listen to her opinion on what goes in there and what shouldn't go in there. Right. You know, I'm the mad scientist. She's the manager of the, of the operation. So, yeah, we we put everything together and we mash it and we put it together and it just creates magic. Yeah. That's what I like to call it. Well, no, I'll tell you, it sounds like, I mean, I hear a lot of stories when I talk to a lot of people out there. Um, it, it always ends up somehow or other. it's the women in their life, you know, how – they, you know, motivated, they helped them out. I mean, it's, if it's not for her support, you probably wouldn't be here. You know, all those times you wanted to tap out and she's like, you got to do it, right? It was her support. You know, if, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be doing this podcast right now. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be here because I'd be working a full-time job. So kill, trucking, trucking, doing that trucking yeah, life. Yeah, ki- you know. Kill no offense to truckers. We just, we, oh, we no, got, no. we got family, we got trucking <laughs> friends over yeah. here. Let me tell you something. I yeah. miss trucking, uh. Those guys I, work hard. They work hard, yeah. It's just, it's a hard job. Oh it's yeah, very it's intense it's on your body. So, what did Laura say? We wouldn't we wouldn't be getting those. Produce. We wouldn't be getting these sauces if it wasn't for those trucks, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. The produce to make them, exactly. nothing. Produce to make them. Everything comes around. Everything full circles to truck yeah. drivers. It really yeah. does. If people say, "Oh, truck drivers," no, no, it all comes full circle. Yeah. Where do you think the product comes from? Where do you think the trains get their stuff from? Yep. Where, the, where, where the trains stop? Where they pick them up? Where they deliver them? Everything full circles to truck drivers. So we need them, and they're very important in this community. Or not just in community worldwide. Truckers are, are are you know they're needed. Oh yeah. They're needed, but um, if it wasn't for my wife, you know, I I, I wouldn't be doing this, you know, because she supported me. She believed in my dream. She really did. She sacrificed a lot to, to, um, to pursue this, you know, this this thing with me. You know, it wasn't her dream. It really wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was my dream. But yeah. She supported me, and I give her, I give her many thanks. I give her a million thanks to that because, you know, most, I'm not gonna say most wives, but a lot of wives would be like, "Well, you're crazy. You're gonna start this. You're out of here. You're on your own, dude." Yeah. yeah. She 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 stood by my side. She backed me up, and and so to me that's. That's awesome. Yeah. Because she believed in my dream. It was my dream. It wasn't hers. Yeah. She fell into it. She said, "You know what? Let's go for it." And I love that. That's great. Because uh, we've we've come a long way. We've come a long way. Oh yeah. You know, you know our story, and yeah. and, and we've come a long way, and we're still going. We're still going. That's the thing. You don't stop. You got to no. keep doing it. And no. It sounds like you're doing. It. I mean, you just came up with another sauce yesterday, right? So you know, I mean, and it, it, it's, it's going and going. It's funny because uh, she, my, you know, my wife, she's gonna go out with her friend, and they're gonna go have dinner and stuff. And I'm like, all right, we'll see you later. Go for it. Uh, I, my, my kids, one well, of their grown kids, they're not little kids anymore. But hey, dad cooks, so dad, yeah. we're hungry. Yeah. Like so, but as soon as I hear their hunger, I'm like, all right, what do you want? Like, you know, I get, I get excited. Yeah. The That's little cool. light, the little light comes on the top of my head. I, I open the refrigerator and I, I, I look in the refrigerator. And I go. You know what? All right, I'm gonna make this. Yeah. So yesterday. That's where the mad scientist comes exactly, in. Just, bow, bow. Exactly. Exactly. So yesterday, what I did was, I grabbed some fire roasted jalapenos. I put them on the grill. I put some um, red onion and I grilled them. And I'm looking for the tomatoes. Well, guess what? We're out of tomatoes. Uh-huh. I look for the tomatillos. Guess what? We're out of tomatillos. Damn. What am I gonna make? I gotta make something. I already fried the tortilla chips and I did this and I did that. Yeah. So I, I saw some zucchini that I had there. I got them, and I cut them up, and I put them on the grill. I, you know, toasted them up a little bit. Yeah. And I made a salsa out of a zucchini, zucchini, jalapeno, fire roasted jalapenos, and a little bit of onion. So I was like, after I finished putting it together, I tasted it, and I said, damn, that's good. <laughs> that's good. And, and with no tomatoes, just zucchini yeah. and a little bit of cold water, you know, just to kind of give it that, that body. Yeah. So when my wife got home, I'm like, I'm all excited. I'm like, here, try this. He's like, oh, that's good. I'm like, doesn't high five. Have- you got yeah, the high five? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, it doesn't have tomatoes. She's like, what? I go, no, it's zucchini. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm always, my mind is like, uh, I want to say it doesn't stop. 
It doesn't That's stop. Good. Every time I'm in the kitchen or every time I get near a kitchen or every time I work, I walk into a supermarket. I'm like a little kid. I go to the veggie section. I look around. I go, I can make a sauce out of that. I yeah. can make a sauce out of that. So my next one that I've been thinking about and I want to do, I'm, I'm going to do it just because I love it, is a watermelon habanero. Oh, wow. Yeah. Out nice. of fresh, <laughs> fresh watermelon. Yeah. 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 So I love fruity flavors. I love, you know, bitter flavors. I love everything. But fruity flavors in a hot sauce is... This is cool to me. You know, it just yeah. makes it even better. You know, um, I remember, I, you know, I didn't tell you about this, but we ha every year we have a family reunion. I think it was two years ago, maybe. I don't know if you remember, Jimmy. Yes. So, like, two years ago we had it, and we had a, um, uh, a, a chile sauce contest. Yes. So we needed a judge. Who do we get to judge? <laughs> we got Jimmy right here, dude. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> sauces, right? <laughs> so they got Jimmy. I was, I, got, I was at a USC game. I got there really late, but I did see you. I said, what's up? But uh, I, didn't, I wasn't there for the sauces. But, you know, there was somebody, I don't know who won, but somebody got awarded for the uh, the, the best sauce in there. I don't know if you remember who it was. You gave yeah, maybe a shout-out. I think, was it Ray? It was Ray. Was it Ray? Yeah. Shout-out to Ray. Yeah. Ray she, Flores. Ray Flores, yeah. That was, Jose Ramon. What's up, Ray? Yeah, What's up, yeah Ray? Ray, that was a good sauce. But, and uh, it's funny, I, I, I will tell you later what he put in it, but it, it was a good sauce. <laughs> he put La Victoria <laughs> sauce. Like yeah. And a little tapatio. <laughs> and some other stuff, and he mixed New it York up. City. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he kind of mixed it up with a bunch of, he was just joking that day. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to joke, but you know what? It actually came up. See, let me tell you guys something about sauces. A lot of people think that you just get tomatillos and you get jalapenos and you put them together and that's a sauce. No. You can add anything to a sauce to make mm -hmm. it your sauce. You know yeah. what I mean? You can add just anything. You, you want to add beer to it, you can add beer. You can, uh, you know, onions, I mean, uh, orange, orange slices, you know, just a little bit of slices in there. Just mix it up. You give it that nice little zest, it becomes your sauce. So whatever you put in it, it's a sauce. Yeah. It's your sauce. Make it your own. You know, so um, when they when they asked me if I could be a judge on the uh, tasting, the salsa tasting contest, I said, well, yeah, it's an honor. I would love to do that. You know, um, we've been up for a few awards and, and – you know, of course. That, that's where I was leading to okay. some of the accomplishments that you've had because I know you said you went to Miami. We really didn't get too much cover about right. your experience in Miami and your time out there because I know you said you had a truck out there and I think you did a show, right? Like the interviews and or oh. you, you were on some kind of a video show or? Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> Maybe you can talk some I'm about sorry, it. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of a little thrown here. Um, Ready for another bit? Sure. Sure. We we um, we did a, we did a, we did a show. Um, uh, uh, the um, what am I gonna go here? We did a uh, the cooking channel. Mm. We did the cooking channel. We called it was called uh, uh, Carnival Eats. It was a show on Carnival Eats on the cooking channel, and they called me up one day and they asked me if I can do the show. And it was funny. I'll tell you a story about that. The they called me up and they I thought it was a friend of mine. I thought somebody was joking with me. Hey, this is so and so with the cooking channel, and I was like, Yeah, yeah. What's up? And she says, no, this is, uh, her name was, uh, I'll tell you, I'm not going to say her last name, but her name was Mia. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Her name was Mia. And she says, Jimmy, my name is Mia. I'm, I'm from the cooking channel. I'm in, uh, in, uh, in Canada. And I would like to uh, do a uh, show with you. And I was like, all right, send me an email. I'll look it up. I'm busy. I was in Tallahassee. No, I'm sorry. I was in um, Pensacola, Florida at the time. We were doing the Pensacola State Fair. So she sends me an email and I look at the email and I said, Oh, wait, this is really the cooking channel. Oh, legit. shoot. Okay, that's legit. So I call her back all excited, and um, I want to tell you guys a funny story about this. So they, they, I call her back, and uh, we start talking about we start talking about this and about that and how you got started, pretty much a story and, uh, and, and how everything comes about. And then it gets to the point where they ask me about my sauce, my creamy chipotle sauce, because they saw that on, face, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I said, she goes, I need to know what's in it. And I said, uh nope i'm not gonna <laughs> tell you can we just call it a secret sauce they're like no no we need to explain to the crowd that what it is what kind of what you're putting in and stuff i said well listen um it's not it's not it's a secret i'm not gonna tell you yeah and she says okay well jimmy i'm gonna have to talk to the producers so i guess we'll get back to you yeah kind of like a little threat yeah. a little sarcastically and i said all right mia well have a good day she goes okay jimmy have a good day i said okay See you later. So we're, <laughs> we're kind of bouncing back and yeah. forth to kind of like, she's trying to get me to say, okay, okay. She's okay. feeling it out. She's yeah. feeling yeah, it yeah. out. So then she goes, okay, Jamie, we'll talk later. I said, all right, Mia, got to go. Boop, I hung up. And I walked away prideful. Yeah. My head in the air. I said, yeah, I just took the cooking channel. <laughs> no way. So I call my wife and I go, I go, <laughs> I call my wife. She's in Miami and I call her up. I go, hey, guess what? She's like, what's up? I go, I just talked to the cooking channel. And I told him no. And she's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I go, you're not going to believe Call him back. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, what, you, what did you do? 
I said, they wanted my recipe. And I said, no. She goes, what? I, I said, no, I wasn't going to give it to them. So what happened? I said, I hung up and that was it. She goes, I'm proud of you. Yeah, cool. You know, yeah. I told I told the cooking channel, if I give you this recipe, then I'm giving it to millions of other people. So it's no longer my recipe. So a couple days later, they call me up and she's like, hey, Jimmy, what's up? It's me. I'm like, hey, what's up? Yeah, how you doing? And then she goes, OK, well, I talked to the producer and um, you're you're a tough one. I said, well, <laughs> you know, this is my recipe and I worked hard for it. She goes, we want to work with you. And I was like, OK. So sure enough, they came to uh, Tallahassee. After we were done in Pensacola, we went to Tallahassee, which is the North Florida State Fair, and they showed up. And they showed up with a crew of, I want to say, about eight people. Yeah. They put cameras up, up in the truck, and I was by myself. Yeah. My brother-in-law had left you know, for the day, and, and the other uh, one of our workers there, he had left too, so I was left by myself, and we filmed. And everything was flawless. Everything was perfect. Everything couldn't have been better. You know, uh, after seeing the on the cooking channel, and let me let me say this: uh, two years ago, the episode was aired. To this day, I still got people on Facebook writing to me, going, "Hey, man, I just saw your episode on on the cooking channel." And I'm like, "What?" Yeah. And that's an honor. I must have done that good <laughs> for yeah. them to be, you know, continue posting. Of course. It. But uh, yeah, so we did the cooking channel back in uh, two years ago, and um, we. This is my. Want to say one of my awesomest accomplishments was. Uh, we were at the Jackson, Mississippi State Fair mm -hmm. in 2015, uh, 2016. Yeah. We were at the Jackson, Mississippi State Fair. We were the first Mexican food truck at the fair, that in the, the fair's attendance that's been around for 150 years. Oh, wow. wow. So we were the first Mexican, Mexican food truck yeah. or Mexican food period at the Jackson, Mississippi. So we were there for three weeks. And about two weeks in, uh, they had a contest, uh, Vendor's Choice Award. Yeah. And uh, we got first place. Nice. nice. You guys and had line for days over yes, there, Yes, huh? we did. We had the state capitol employees lined up every morning with us. Nice. And it was a stressful three weeks that we were there because it was nonstop every day. Yeah. And it was a blessing because when they gave us the award, I thought, wow, man, I just won Jackson, Mississippi. You know? And, and that, to me, was, was an amazing award. It yeah. was an amazing award. I literally, no joke, when they gave me the, the, the award, I turned around and cried. I turned around and cried. I really did. I, I bawled. Yeah. And I thought, wow, this is awesome, man. I mean, this is so awesome. I was humbled by it. Mm -hmm. I was so just, just all these emotional feelings just came over me like, man, I really did this, you know? And so, yeah, we go back to Miami and uh, we went first place, uh, best in taste yeah. at the Jack, at the Miami Youth Fair, which is equivalent to the Pomona Fair here in Los Angeles or Pomona. Yeah. And we won first place for best in taste. We come back from Miami. We do a taco local, a taco local festival in Boyle mm -hmm. Heights, and we get first place. Nice. And I'm like, man, I think we got something here. I mean, you did full circle from East LA to Miami to Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Nationwide. Yeah, we took it. We took it out there. Uh, me and my wife, we had a, a stand in Key Largo. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful little bar in Key Largo called the Caribbean Club. Yeah. And we used to go down there just to have a couple beers because they have this beautiful setting with chairs and tables and the, the ocean's right there. I mean, you can literally sit at the bar and throw rocks into the water. And one day I reached out to the owner. Her name's Kathy. And I said, hey, Kathy, my name's Jimmy. I'm from East L.A. Uh, I do tacos. Uh, would it be okay if I showed up one day and did uh, tacos on a Taco Tuesday? Yeah. Question mark, question mark. A couple days go by. She messages me back, says, that'd be great, but can you come on a Friday? I said, yeah, even better. Yeah. So we went on a Friday and we set up the sarapes, the calaveras, because we yeah. our whole theme is calaveras. Yeah. Uh, Dia de los Muertos is our whole theme. So we put up our table, we put up our calaveras, and um, she came out and greeted us. And she had a bunch of people there, her friends, to try our food. And that was it. I'll never forget this. This one guy, uh, his name was Jimmy Sample. Mm -hmm. That was his actual last name, Sample. Sample. He comes up and uh, he's from New York. He's living in Miami, or actually Key Largo. He comes up and says, Kathy, do me a favor. Do not let these guys leave. Let them, just keep them, keep them. Yeah. And I remember Kathy, in the, you know, walking away going, oh, they're not going nowhere. They're staying here. <laughs> so that was the beginning of something new for us. Yeah. We were at Key Largo, and literally we had people from all over the world, from Europe, from Hungary, uh, just every part of the world having our food. Yeah. And they were coming over to us and, and having our food, and complimenting us um we had a young couple from hungary that never had tacos before so they said you guys will be the first time trying your tacos you know they did with an accent yeah 
And they came back and gave us a thumbs up. And I thought, oh, that's pretty damn cool. Nice. You know? So we, we literally have given food to people from all over the world, you know, from the traveling that we did. And, yeah. and uh, we just got nothing but open arms from everybody. So to us, it's a, it's a blessing. It really is. No, that's why it's so important to have your, your, I mean, your name up in smoke. It's up, I mean, you're never going to forget that name up in smoke, right? Right. Now, to top it off, you got the sarapes in front of you, the calaveras, the sauces. Well, you didn't have the sauces then, right? No, not, okay. not at the time. But so the name with, I mean, just the presentation alone, you're never going to forget something like that. So when you got people from all over the world, they see, they're going to remember that. They see that they're going to remember that. They're going to run across it again. They're going to look for you. They're going to Google you. I'm sure if they Google you now, it's all over the place, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Yeah strong just to have that name alone you know it's funny again but it goes back to you the the wife <laughs> oh yeah of course of course and, and let me tell you something we have a, a pretty good following i mean i, I run all the pages uh, instagram I, those are all i run them and so we get a lot of requests and and followers from from japan mm -hmm. and i i look at the posts and they'll write to me and i'll write back to them and they're from japan and i'm like oh man this is great this is really cool yeah so i had a young kid well i don't know if he was young but it was as far as his profile, he looked like a young kid. He was from Europe, and he messaged me one day, and he asked me for a simpler recipe. And I said, yeah. And so I wrote him back, and then <laughs> he writes me back, oh, man, thank you so much, dude. That's so cool of you. Man, I didn't think you were going to get back to me. And I'm like, why not? Yeah. You know, share the wealth. Why not? You're not going to – you're in Europe. I'm in L.A., dude. Come on. It's, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I shared it with them, and he was all excited, and that made me feel good. It really made me feel good that people are reaching out to us for, for recipes or people are asking us for advice as far as like uh, this one gentleman. I remember him. He had a he was starting up a food truck and he was doing burgers and he had called me up so I can go to his house and try his food. And he was my sister's friend. And I said, sure. And he kept calling me like, can you come down on this day, this day? And I'm like, why is he calling me? Yeah. So my sister's like, she he wants he wants you to try the food. And I was like, all right, I guess. Free food? Why not? Let's yeah, go. Let's do it. So I went to his house. We had some burgers. We sat down and barbecued them. It was just me and him and my sister. And we had some food. And he just kept going, what do you think, man? What do you think? And I'm like, dude, this is good. And that's all he wanted to hear from me. Yeah. And then, and he's like, man, thank you, dude. And he shook my hand and everything. Ended up getting a food truck. Nice. And doesn't have it now, but he had it back then. But he wanted my opinion. And to me, that's like, Wow, really? Like mm -hmm. to me, I was like, "All right, I just I'll go try your food." I, you want my honest opinion? It sucks or it's good, but it was good. Yeah. It was really good. I, I enjoyed what he did, and he did something different. And he wanted my opinion. I just thought, "Wow, that's pretty cool. I, that's pretty awesome that he's reaching out to me." So we had a lot of people message us, question and stuff. We, you know, like I told you a little bit earlier, we inspired a lot of people. I'm not going to mention any names, but we inspired a lot of people. And to me, that's wow, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, because we believed in this, we took it. And and if I can just add something to this, I know a lot of people might not know this or, you know, kind of. When we started doing this, this is back in 08, late 07, 08, mm -hmm. we started doing this. You know, we, we, we established it in 2010 because that's when we really got into it. Yeah. We established it in 2010. But this is 07, 08, and we started doing this. A lot of people laughed at us. <laughs> you guys are doing that now? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, you know, they looked at us like if we were, I don't want to use a word, but they looked at us like, they, they kind of like looked at it, they looked down on us like, oh, you guys are doing that. And I was like, well, you know, we have a passion for cooking. What's wrong with it? They laughed at us. They didn't think that was cool. Yeah. And now that I go on the internet and I see all these other culturas doing it, you know, you guys got the guys from South Central and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, we were... Me and my wife, we were ahead of the game oh, before yeah. a lot of these yeah. guys were. Yeah. We were ahead of the game. And I can, I can honestly say that yeah. with pride and say, you know what? We were in this before a lot of people were in this. It's probably safe to say that you you, you guys made a lot of influence in, in most of the, a lot of these A lot of these people. I, I can honestly say that. Uh, there's, there's companies out there right now that are up and running. And I can say that they followed our lead. They really yeah. did. They really did. Because at the time, I'm going to just make this as cool as possible. A lot of people that were doing this were... My gente, which I'm proud of, yeah. my raza mm -hmm. from Mexico, you know, that we're doing this. Yeah. So when you had a guy like me and my wife, you know, we're born here in L.A. Chicanos. We're doing Chicanos. We're doing this. They're going to look at you and go, oh, you're doing that. You know, people from Mexico do that. Yeah. Well, people from Mexico are doing it, and they're doing great. And they're, they, they got, you know, they're, they're making good money. They're, they're li This is their livelihood. They're making great money. Yeah. So why wouldn't you want to get into this? But there's a stigma behind it. Yeah. Oh, you're from L.A. You shouldn't be doing that because only the people from L uh, Mexico do that. Yeah. 
There shouldn't be that. There shouldn't be. We're we're the same people. It doesn't matter if you're born in Mexico or if you're born here. Mm -hmm. You do what you do because of what you love to do. Yeah, because you love to do it. You do. You know, so we started doing this because I love to do it. But we had a lot of people laugh at us, dude. And it just it makes me. Now they're not laughing at us. Oh, now no. they're now they're like, you know, applauding us. Yeah, you guys yeah. are doing great. Hey, hook me up with some sauce. Yeah, hook me up with yeah. some sauce. I get that a lot. Give me a bottle. Hook yeah. it up. Hey, can I get a sample? I'm like, no, you guys. Can I have those? <laughs> no, those are for you guys. Those right. are for um, you guys. What are, are your, for your, are they just like topping sauces or do you have any marinades? No, not at all. These, these are, these are marinades. Oh, they're marinades? They're, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't have any, I have a few videos on, on Instagram and, um, you know, I like to cook with these, for example, like the creamy chipotle, I use it on chicken. So basically when you're cooking chicken up and it's nice and diced and it's already, you know, I would say like half done, I would add some of that creamy chipotle to it and just mix it. It gives it a really good flavor. The salsa roja there is great for... A up in fuego. Up in fuego. It's great for marinating steaks. Really good for marinating, marinating steaks. It has um, a hickory flavored chipotle, and let me tell you something. That right there was amazing in Mississippi. Oh, they loved it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I had guys stealing it from me. Oh, really? Literally, yeah, yeah. I would, I would walk up because we had a little thing in the front of the truck, which was a, uh, like a little flap where we would put the food at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the salsas at, and I would have little plastic bottles, and I would come out every so often and look, you know, kind of clean up the top, and I'd, I'd look and. Oh, come on, man. Some of the bottles were gone. Oh, they're taking they were the gone. bottles. The they bottle. were taking the bottles. And I'm like, so, but I had a whole bunch of, uh, you know, that I had bought on the side, uh, yeah. you know, uh, extras. Right. And I would have to fill them up. And so, uh, yeah, they were stealing them from us. Yeah. And I remember this one time, it was funny. We had this one young kid, not young, uh, about 15, 16. He walked up and grabbed some of that, that creamy chipotle and he put it in his hamburger. Yeah. And he just walked up to it, the truck, like nonchalant, just put on his in his on his hamburger closed it and walked away and i thought hey that's pretty cool man <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah. right and i just thought hey so all these people were doing like dipping their fries with it and stuff so my imagine not my imagine my mind's going wait a minute this is good for this this is good for that so i started experimenting you know you know i wasn't the one that you know said oh it's great for marinating it's great for this great for that no they're the ones that i saw them so yeah. i kind of followed their lead but um it's funny. I'm going to tell you a quick little story. My son, Justin, my, my big boy, yeah. he's my, my awesome kid. Well, they're all my awesome kids. My <laughs> boy, Justin, he's, he's badass. Yeah. One day we were doing this uh, this gig in Boyle Heights, and uh, he had put the creamy chipotle in the chicken while it was cooking. You know, but like, remember, we, we cook it to where it's like almost cooked. Yeah. There's still a little bit of, you know, a little bit of fat on it that's not cooked. So it's it, everything has its timing. Yeah. We don't just throw right. it at the beginning. We do it at the end so it kind of marinates it. So I saw him putting the creamy chipotle on top of the, the chicken. And I looked at him. I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm experimenting. That. You know, I'm, I'm experimenting, Dad. And I said, no, not right now, dude. There's a lot of people. You don't yeah. do that. Yeah. I said, man, what did you do? And then he's like, dude, he's like, Dad, don't worry about it. And I'm like, oh, man. So I walked away. He did his thing. So that night, I heard people talking. And, and I heard this one guy. I'll never forget. The guy says, this is the best chipotle chicken I've ever had. Yeah. And I, I looked at my son and I went over and I gave him the high five. Yeah, the high five. <laughs> yeah. I gave him the high five and I, I gave him props and I said, man, that's great, Justin. What you've done, you created something new. So when we did the cooking channel and I did the, you know, I put the creamy chipotle in the sauce and they called it the secret sauce. And in the, the host, Noah Cap tries it. Mm -hmm. I looked at my son, I said, because of you, dude. And he just gives me a big smile like, yeah. thanks, dad. Now, that was cool. You know, yeah. that was a... A real nice moment for us there, you know? Yeah. You know, I gave him props for that. Yeah. You know, so I give people props. Like, I give my wife a lot of a lot of props for, for this business because mm -hmm. cause without her, I wouldn't be doing this, you know? Yeah. I, I started it. I did what I did, and then I wanted out because it's just a lot of work. Yeah. But she's the one that kept pushing me and pushing me and says, no, you got to do, you got to follow your, follow it. You can't just start it and not finish it, you know? So that's what I did. I see a lot of... um a lot of the pictures that you put on Instagram and on your Facebook. And I do see that when you have an event, it's your family's there. It's your whole family. Yeah. Yeah. I see mostly, uh, uh, you know, your son, your daughter, Rocio's there. Um, is it like a family thing now? I mean, are they all kind of just growing into it? They, they want to be a part of it. Do they, do they come up to you that? I want, you know, show me this, show me that. Are they asking you about the business? Is, is this something that you think that they're going to try to get into? 
I, I, I mean, I, I know as a parent, all you want your, your kid to go to school, you want to go to yeah, college, yeah. you know. I always, you know, no, thank you for that. I, I do. I, I invite them. I like to invite them over. And, and my whole thing is I want it to be a family business. Uh, we have partner, right? We have a partner by the name of Frank mm -hmm. and Raul. And those are our partners on the side, you know, that uh, we're, we're all a big team now. But I like to bring my kids in because I want to show them the, the you know, the work ethnic, you know, oh, yeah. to work and to, 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 to value what you make, money you make and stuff and just go out there. So I, I brought him in as Justin, my oldest son. When we started this, I would bring him in because my wife worked in, at Costco and, you know, there was, she was never, you know, she was always working. Yeah. I didn't have anybody else. So I would invite Justin over and uh, tell him, dude, I need your help. You know, just flip tortillas and stuff like that. And I'll never forget this day one day. We were at a, at a party in La Habra. I remember that. And it was uh, a couple of uh, Anglos, you know, buenos, you know. White guys. White guys, yeah. And uh, white girls. We've said that before on the show. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, you know, and, bros. Yeah, we gotta be politically incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of, uh, la you know, a couple Latinos, but mainly white people. Yeah. Which, my white people, right on. Of course. I give them, I give them my props because they're, they're a big supporter of us. So I remember there was a line of a couple little weritas, little blondies and stuff. They were waiting in line, and my son was about thirteen, maybe thirteen, fourteen at the time, and uh, he looks over at the right and he sees a line of bunch of young girls his age yeah and and then i i kind of give him that little nudge and i go hey justin are you embarrassed to do this and he looks at me and he gives me that that, that finger sign he goes dad you're paying me and i, and, and I just thought how cool is that you know what i mean yeah you're like, like no i'm not yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know so but like you said you're, you're you're teaching them the work ethic you know so yeah, exactly. so they're learning and he's what 13 14 he's already yeah. learning that yeah, ethic. that's yeah. really good so i taught him that at a young age and and he's actually become a pretty good chef i mean he's you know i can i can honestly walk away now i'm gonna tell you something i'm very when it comes to cooking i don't walk away from my food i yeah. just can't i am very scared my wife's one of them that i'll of course i trust 100 percent, right. and my son justin okay. anybody else i'm kind of biting my fingernails yeah you know because i want to make sure it's good but my wife and my son justin they know that I can walk away and be comfortable. Yeah. And I've taught him as a young kid. Now, you know, he's a, he's a responsible young man. He's working at Costco. He's he's going to school. And I've always told him, look, this is not a career that I choose for you, but this is a, a, a something that you can follow maybe later on down the road. Yeah. You know, our plan is, and I, I'm going to give it a shout out to my, my boy, Frank Roca. And, uh, you know, he, he believed in the product and, and his beautiful mother, Vicky Roca, she believed in us. And she put this together, a little plan together. And we want to open up a restaurant. And with the name and our image, you know, with, with our, our image and our name and stuff, I mean, I think we can really blow this up. And our oh, yeah. style of cooking right. and our, our recipes and stuff, I think we can really, really blow this up. So, like I tell my kids, it, it, right now it's just what we're doing, but later on it could be something really, really big. And you guys can fall back on it. It's not your career choice, yeah. but use it as a something, you know, as – what do you call that? As, I mean, you don't want to call it a cushion because, you know, you, you, you definitely don't want to, like uh... – enable them in, in, in any way right, of, right. Of, of actually falling and using that cushion but as a parent you you have to right who what parent isn't gonna try to set that up as for the mm -hmm. child right? right right and if you have the means for it now i mean that's what you you're know doing. my youngest his name is Jaden, and oh man he's he's a handful he's he's my boy he's always asking me questions about cooking and stuff and i want to show him you know i want to show him as as a young kid um if i can go back to 1989 you know my dad passed away. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to go into any somber stories or anything like that, but I'm just going to let you know. My dad passed away, and we were a tight-knit family. My brothers and sisters, we were a really tight-knit family. And when my dad passed away, my mom would cook for us. She would clean, and she did everything for us. You know, yeah. God bless her soul. Um, she's not gone yet, but right, she's, yeah, yeah. God bless her. Yeah. Um, so you can still say, <laughs> that's what I say hey, about God, my dad. God can still bless your soul. That's what I say. God, like, God, God bless his soul. Why he passed away? No, <laughs> he's just really tired. <laughs> just, just give him some rest. <laughs> there you no, go. No, my mom's still around, and God bless her for yes. that. You know, but um, <laughs> um, after my dad had passed away, my mom, um, she went into the room. Yeah. Literally, and she says, "Mijo, I'm gonna go into my room." And she went into her room for years. She was depressed. You know, my dad was her 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 rock. He was everything for her. Yeah. So there was times where I'd come home, you know, from you know hanging out with friends or doing something, and my mom was always a provider to cook a meal for me. Yeah. I never really had to cook. Right. You know, my mom. I come home. There was food. Mm -hmm. 
And after my dad passed away, there was no food. And I come home to an empty house. Yeah. My brothers and sisters were gone. My dad was gone for good. My mom was locked in a room. And I'd, I'd go over and I can hear her crying. And I'd be like, you know, knock on the door. Mom, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, Miko, I'm okay, okay. It broke my heart, you know, yeah. to, to hear my mom cry, you know, missing my dad and stuff. But um, I, had a, I had a cook for myself. You know, I had to go to the kitchen and just like, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, just I had to kind of pick things up on my own. So what I try to do now is my youngest son, Jaden, I try to show him how to cook. Yeah. You know, I, look, come here. I'm going to show you. This is how we do this. How we do it. Turn that. Do this. Do that. I want to show them the fun fundamentals of cooking, of everything that we can do, because one day dad's not going to be here. And I told him that, you know, I told him that I yeah. told him one day I said, what's going to happen when I'm not around? Who's going to cook for you? And he just kind of looked at me, you know, and I don't want to do that to them, but I've lost a parent and I know what it feels like. Yeah. I know what, it's hard. And my dad always used to tell me, you know, in Spanish, the day I die, I don't want you to cry for me. And I'd be like, well, why not? He goes, no, what are you, you going to cry for? It, it's what it is. Yeah. C continue with your life. And I've taken that. I've taken that, that thing he told me. I really have. I really have taken it, you know. When he died, I, I stood strong. Yeah. I stood there like, you know, yeah, I was hurting inside. I was devastated. Right. But I took his word and I kept it true to him by not crying and staying strong, which I didn't. Of course, I would go in my room and cry at, you know, at night. I had to, but yeah. I didn't cry in front of anybody because I, you know, my dad told me to be strong and I'm going to be freaking strong. Yeah. That was me. So I try to teach my kids cooking is not just for a job or for something. It's for your livelihoods, for your for for your life, for yeah. to take care of you, to take care of anybody else. Don't depend on anybody else. Right. And I've taught them that do not depend on anybody. Depend on yourself because nobody can do anything like you can. Right. You know. So. That reminds me a lot of that old that old, old saying. Uh, Be careful uh, now. Oh, that old. <laughs> you see, now you put me on the spot. <laughs> you can. You can take a man to fish, but if you teach him how to fish, well, see now you, oh, you killed it, dude, bro. <laughs> no, Forget no. it. Let's continue. <laughs> You know uh, what? You, you know what you remind me of? Have you seen the movie Chef? I know you've seen oh it. Oh, Chef! God. No. Great yes. movie. No, dude, this guy's the chef right here. Oh yeah. You, it, it, it remind. Uh, that's a great movie. Great. Yeah. That, we're just watching that movie. Makes you want to eat, and just listen to your story. Makes oh, you want to eat. Oh man, that's so crazy. You gotta watch it. Dude. I gotta, yeah, I gotta you, watch it. You haven't seen I've Chef. Seen, I haven't it's seen great, Chef. right? Oh, it's good. Oh my god. Who, who's in that movie? Uh, who's, uh, the chef? John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo. Oh, really? And then uh, what's that? The oh, dude's name? Yeah, he's a director. The main, the main chef. The you dude know, from Iron Man, oh the, the butler dude, not a butler, but uh, the guy with the suit. Nope. I don't know his name because he's 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 a great actor. Yeah. But I'm gonna give you the the little story about him. Yeah. So he's a chef working at a restaurant. Sofia Vergara. Sofia Vergara, yeah, Sophia yeah. Vergara. And uh, Colombian. What was the name of the main actor? That's my wife in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Leguizamo, and then. Uh, Oh, Sofia Vergara and I forget the name of the. Well, this is funny though. I'm gonna tell you a funny story about that. Because, we'll Google that later. All right. <laughs> so the the actor, uh, the main actor of the movie, he's actually the director of the movie. He's yeah. the chef. He's working at a restaurant, and he's working for people that he doesn't want to work for because they're being a holes. Mm -hmm. Can can we cuss on this podcast? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He, well, have yeah. we have we dropped anything? Is this a PG show? So far? <laughs> have the first. I, no, I, I think I, I said I might have said something. I think this is a PG. I think other than have who who was it? I think she had it. It's um John. No. Favreau. John, oh, Favreau. John Favreau. Yes, that's right. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. great. So yeah. he's working for. Well, yeah, you could talk however you want. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> this how is how we, we talk. This is how, right? how we talk. Yeah, how we talk. How one word. How we talk podcast. All one word. Search, share, review, subscribe. Click and so uh, he's a chef that's working at a restaurant and doesn't want to work for the owner because yeah. the owner's a jerk. It's his recipes. It's his style of cooking. But the owner owns the restaurant. And either you cook under my rules or you're out of here. Yeah. And, and, and that goes to a lot of restaurants, you know, because they want you to do what they want. They want. But you've got these ideas and stuff and they don't want you to do it. Well, anyways, he gets a food truck and goes to Miami. Kind of what I did. Not, mm -hmm. not in all that same order because I wasn't working at a restaurant. Yeah, I was a truck driver. Yeah, but I was doing catering. I went to Miami, and sure enough, just like the movie, I was doing the the social media. I was doing the Twitter. No, I'm sorry, I was doing the Instagram. I was doing the Facebook. I was doing all the social media, and people were coming up to our truck. And this is funny. My brother-in-law Angel, God bless his soul too. Yeah. Even though he's, he's not. <laughs> God bless his soul. 
he would tell me, oh, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't work? Yeah, it does. He goes, no, it doesn't work. So people would come up to the truck and like, oh, we, fo- we, we follow you guys on, on Instagram and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I would look over at him and go, I told you it works. <laughs> and so he would laugh and yeah. like, ah, whatever. He's just old be- school. Old school, right? But um, the movie has a lot of reflection to what I did. You know, you know, I was working here. I wasn't happy. And if I may add, I was working for a trucking company. Okay, trip out on this. This mm-hmm. is so funny. So I had a, a supervisor, and his name was Moy. Moy. Right? Moy. Uh, we'll put his last name out there, but his name was Moy. And I remember giving him my two weeks notice because I'm leaving to Miami. So my brother-in-law, Angel, he sends me a, 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 a what is it, a, 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 a itinerary? Draw, no, oh. a drawing, a drawing of the, not a drawing, a a plants to the food truck. Okay. Hmm. And he tells me, Oh man, we're going to do this. And I'm like, yeah, great. Let's do it. So I give my two weeks notice. My brother-in-law says, Jimmy, this is the date you're going to get your flight. He booked my flight and everything for me. I was like, Oh shit. You know, we're going to go for it. Yeah. This is real. Right. You know, this is no joke. We're going for it. So I remember my wife taking me to the airport and I was like, I hate flying. I really hate flying. So I was at the airport. I was shaking, but I'm like, I'm going to Miami. Yeah. I'm going to freaking Miami. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's, we're going to take this flavor. We're going to, we're going to rock it. And, um, uh, you know, we're going out there and, uh, at the, at the airport and stuff. And, um, I'm trying to get back to the story. I was trying to say it. the, the <laughs> chef's like in the movie, oh, yeah, in the movie. Yeah. So I'm trying to, so we go out there and, uh, I fly out there, but just like the movie, I tell my supervisor, I give him his two weeks notice. Yeah. And, and it, he's at his desk. I remember this. And it's a trucking company, a pretty big trucking company. He sits there. And I used to deliver produce for to all the restaurants. So yeah. I was meeting all these other chefs at these restaurants. And I was telling them about my sazon. Yeah. You know, my, 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 how do you say sazon in English? Um, I have no idea. Sazon? Sazon. <laughs> sazon is like, like your, your, your hand. Like, like you grab this and you boom, 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 boom. You throw that yeah. stuff in there. It's, it's your hand that you put into the food. Your mm-hmm. sazon. Yeah. It's a Spanish word. It's like, you know, th- th- somebody will come up to you and go, you have sazon. Tienes sazon. Like, like you have your hand. Yeah. You, you know, you don't need measurements. You just boom, boom, boom. You know, so I remember giving him my two weeks notice and he says, well, where are you going? I said, don't matter. I'm quitting, dude. Two weeks. Yeah. Because he was a jerk. Yeah. And then. Fucking moi. He, he has. <laughs> Can I say that? Moi. Fucking moi? Yeah, you oh, can say great. that. Fucking moi. Oh, that's the good. <laughs> Might as well throw his last name out there. <laughs> so I end up, I end up walk, I'm walking out of his office, and he says something about, uh, well, good luck to you. And I stop, and I remember looking straight. I look, I'm looking straight, and as soon as he said, good luck to you, and I said, what a freaking jerk. So yeah. I turned around, I looked at him, I said, I walked back up to his desk and I said, you're going to be telling your guys that I used to work here. And he goes, and he crosses his arms. What do you mean by that? Yeah. You know, like that. And I look at him and not knowing anything and not, not knowing nothing. I said, because one day I'm going to be on TV and you're going to be telling your employees I used to work here. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, right, whatever. And I said, see you later. And I walked out of his office all just stomping my feet pissed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did. I was on the cooking channel and I remember texting. I still had his number and I remember texting him. <laughs> text, I swear text him to you. The, text him the link I, to the show. Here you go. <laughs> I texted him and I said, hey, I made it on the cooking channel. And then I talked to another friend of mine that worked there and I go, hey, does Moy still have the same number? He goes, yeah, he does. He yeah. saw my text. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, so I did. I, I, I said what I did and I completed what I said I was going to do. Yeah. I wasn't on a hundred shows, but Yet I was on a show. You were on a show, yeah. You I, kept I, your I, word. I kept my word. Yeah. And you know, so hopefully one day he'll he'll tell his employees that he used to work here. He was, I was his supervisor, you know. Yeah. For whatever that is, but whatever. But it's a sense of pride, you know. Like it, you're, you like you said, you said it, you meant it, you you worked hard at it, you read, you met all your goals, you reached for it. And he, you spoke it. It he spoke See, it into existence. Spoke it into existence. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I got that from Levar Ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! My kids always wow. tell me, my daughter Jamie. She's always saying, um, "What's the word she uses?" Uh, uh, oh my gosh! Like I'm in I'm in traffic. I'm like, oh, there's traffic, and she's like, "Dad, dad, you're 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 talking about it. What is that word? Um, when you talk about traffic, it's gonna happen. When you talk about this, it's gonna happen." Oh, uh, I don't know. Like predicting? No. What is that word she uses? Oh my gosh! I don't even. Let's know get her on it. Skype. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Get her on the line. We don't have that right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but she, she, she tells me, uh, you know, you're always because uh, I hate traffic. Yeah. You know, here in Los Angeles. Manifesting. Oh, no, not manifesting. Oh my 
god, it's a word she uses. How old is she? She's twenty. Lit. Lit. Yeah. <laughs> Traffic's lit, Dad. No, no. She says something about um uh, uh when you when you when you when you talk about something, it's gonna happen. Yeah. And she uses this word all the time, but um. You mean like coming to fruition? Not predicting. No. What is a word? But she's always saying it and stuff. But what, what, what no, I'm trying to get back to is like when you when you put something in your mind, mm -hmm. you will receive it. Yeah. You know. All these things that we have accomplished and people that we've done. I mean, we've done celebrities. Um, you know, we've been believed through a lot of people, yeah. you know. So I've always told, funny story. This is back in uh, my 42nd birthday. Mm -hmm. I'm old. 40-something birthday. Yeah. We had a big party. And uh, one of my idols showed up to my party. Yeah. My idol showed up to my party. Yeah. Danny De La Paz, which is Chuko from That's, Boulevard Nights and yeah, yeah. Uh, Big He's Puppet from... Big Puppet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at me. Don't look at me, carnal. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened was I had this party, and it was called uh, Taco Palooza. Mm -hmm. So I had a bunch of bands, which my son's band being one of them, my brother my brother Ever, mm -hmm. his other band being another one. And then we had Anthony David, which is from Led Zeppelin. Now he's in Led Zeppelin. At the time, nice. he wasn't, but he's a friend of ours. Yeah. So he played in Led Zeppelin Live. And then we had another band called Defunct with yeah. Louis Lama's great friend of mine. And so we had all these bands together. So I reached out to Danny La Paz's manager. His name's Gabe. And I reached him out in uh, Facebook yeah. at the time. And uh, I actually emailed him. So he, he wrote me back. And he says, well, what's your number? Let me call you. Yeah. So he called me. He's like, well, you know, Danny De La Paz charges X amount of dollars to do special events. And I said, well, you know, I don't have that type of money. I just maybe hook him up a couple beers and some food. Yeah. And uh, this is for another event, actually another event that we wanted to do. Yeah. And so me and him just got along on the phone, literally. Yeah. We just kind of joked around. Danny or the manager? No, the manager. Okay, Gabe. Yeah, Gabe. He's from Camarillo. Yeah. And we laughed and joked. So we did a gig one day uh, called the uh, uh, Oklahoma Tornado Relief. Mm -hmm. We raised money for the Oklahoma Tornado, you know, from the Red Cross. Yeah. Me and, a, and another company by the name of Southwest Catering, Robert Castro, good food. Um, I'll give him props. Good shout guy. Out. Yeah, shout What's out up, to Robert, Robert Castro. Um, good guy. He put a, a, a great program together. And uh, so he wanted me to be part of it. Robert Castro at the time broke his arm, so he couldn't cook. He's like, yeah. Jimmy, do you mind cooking? I'm like, dude, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. Dude, I'll, you put me behind the grill, I'll do what you want me to do. Yeah. I don't. You don't have to ask me. I'll do it all day, all night. That's who I am. That's what I love to do. Right. So we had put this program together. So um, unbeknownst to me, his manager comes walking into the event. And I remember watching him, seeing pictures of him. And I'm like, oh, shoot, that's his manager. That's Danny, Danny De La Paz's manager. I'm yeah. like, oh, shoot. I'm like, what's up, Gabe? So he comes up to me, gives me a big hug. He buys us some food. And he drops a couple hundred dollars into the, to the pot. I'm like, oh, man, good looking out. Now, mind you, this is not money that's going into our pockets. This is mm -hmm. money that's going into the Red Cross right. for the Oklahoma. Yeah. And this is a community put together, Al Sereno. Yeah. So I was happy to be part of that program and um so we got along and then so that was it he went home and i was like oh man he showed up cool man so we're doing this taco palooza for my birthday all these bands are playing we're in the kitchen i'm not even enjoying my birthday because i'm cooking yeah <laughs> you know so i you know every so often i come out and look around and i'm like oh, okay there's people here oh my god there's a lot of people shoot it's a lot yeah. of people so i'm in the kitchen cooking all of a sudden i my son comes walking in and says hey dad Big puppets outside. I said, "Who? <laughs> He's all big puppet. He's at the bar. What? He's like that, that actor, big puppet." And I'm like, "Shut up." He's like, "Yeah, my son Justin." Yeah. So I walk out there and I'm like, "Everybody's taking pictures with them." And I'm like, "My mouth just drops because, yeah. you know, being from East LA, I grew up watching Boulevard Nights, which is one of my, I would say, my top five movies. Yeah. Boulevard Nights is a great movie. And so is American Me, but Boulevard Nights is. Yeah, Boulevard Nights is a good movie. Yeah. Great movie. Man. You seen it? Right? No. Oh my it. God! You, you gotta, gotta watch, watch it. it. It's a great, great movie. It's it's a 1979 movie, based in, out of East LA, mm -hmm. and I'm from '71, so I I saw, I I can relate to that because right. I grew up watching the lowriders and watching the gangs, the way they I dressed have like seen that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so I yeah. I'm, I was a kid in '79. I was what nine years old, but I remember watching the lowrider scene. And my sister Pat, she was uh, friends with a couple of lowrider guys, and they would come around and the way they would dress and the way they would dress. Mm -hmm. So I got to see that. So I related to that movie very, very powerfully, yeah. you know. And it being in East LA, I grew up in the hood, so yeah. I know that movie. I, I lived that movie. Yeah. I lived it. I wasn't in the gangs, 
But as a young little chavalito, I grew up watching it. So um, just being part of that, anyways, he was there at the party, and I walked up to him, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, wow, man, great, you know, this and that. Thank you for coming down. He's like, it's your birthday. I go, yeah. He gives me a big hug. He goes, you want a beer? I'm like, sure, I'll take a beer Yeah. because they had a full bar. So we end up sitting there through the whole entire night drinking and partying. Everybody's like, hey, Danny, can we take a picture? Danny, can we take a picture? And I'm just sitting there drinking beer with them and his manager. We're all hanging out, laughing and stuff. And I and I was all excited. I remember going home with my family, and I was driving. I shouldn't have been driving that night. I, yeah. I mean, that neither sh- you know, none of us should have been driving. Yeah. And uh, I remember telling my wife, "Man, we're gonna do celebrities. Man, we're gonna do celebrities. We're gonna do celebrities." And sure enough, we um, we got to that point. We yeah. got to the point where we've done celebrities. You nice. know, and uh, just like everyday people, they're just cool, down to earth people. You know, and uh, it, it, that was the first celebrity that we've ever cooked for Mm -hmm. or or hung out with that that really like wow you know like that to me that was awesome yeah you know but they're just like i said they're just down to earth people they're everyday people right i mean they're just like you and i it's just that the more people know them they have more followers than us you know yeah (laughs) yeah, yeah. i mean for now for now yeah yeah but uh yeah that i mean that's cool like you know we're talking about the chefs for now and celebrities um one of the fallen chefs celebrities that just recently anthony bourdain oh yeah I mean, how how do you feel about, you know, everything that he's uh, everything that he's accomplished? You know, first and foremost with the chef and his TV shows, and you is, know, is, is, uh, he, is he something that you inspire to yes. as well? I mean, oh, yeah, definitely. Let me tell you something about Anthony Bourdain. That the 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 morning I woke up and I watched the news, I'm a real sentimental guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I might look, I might not look like, it, but I I still cry at, uh, <laughs> you know, watching Coco. I really do. Uh, I mean, just I'm I'm just a real touchy guy. I might, yeah. I might not show it to my wife, but I'll turn around and I'm like. <laughs> you know, I'll wipe the tears out. Yeah. I, I got a big heart, man. I really do. When I saw the news in the morning that Anthony died, I, I literally choked up. I mean, tears came out of my eyes. I'm like, oh my gosh, no. You know, Guy Ferrieri loved the guy. Mm-hmm. He's man. I would love to meet him. Yeah, I would love to meet Guy. Guy, I would love to meet Guy. Any other chef, Bobby Flay, and all those other guys. Yeah, whatever. I don't care too much about him. Yeah, Guy, I would love to meet. But Anthony had that just so. His whole his whole image was just so humbled. Yeah, I mean, he was just a humbled human being, and I loved I loved the way he just asked simple questions and let them talk, like what you're, we're doing now. You yeah. guys ask yeah. the simple questions and let them do all the talking. Of course, he would get straight to the point. I love the way he asked, "What do you like to cook? What do you like to eat?" Simple questions, and that made his show so much even more better because he was such a humble humble guy. And when I died, you know, when I heard he had passed away on the news that, you know, he committed suicide, Mm -hmm. I was devastated. I'm like, man, you you got the life I want to live, dude. You got everything. But mental illness, it's just, it's it's a a, a MF. It's it's no joke, man. It's no joke, man. You know, you might think the guy has the best life in the world because he's traveling the world. He's he's eating the best food. He's drinking the best beer. I mean, I watch his shows religiously because I love his passion on food. I mean, this guy was passionate about food. His Mm -hmm. food... And and just how he lived his life. I mean, the guy had the everybody's dream job, at least yeah. my dream job. Right. <laughs> my dream job. Yeah. And and when he died, I I literally I, I choked up, man. I, yeah. I literally just like, oh man, are you serious, man? I was hurt. Yeah. But you know, God bless his soul and and and, and God rest his soul because mental illness is it's it's a it's a big thing that that you know a lot of people you see people write that on social media and stuff like you know. I want to kill myself, and a lot of people don't take that seriously, and we should take it seriously. Oh, yeah. Whether if it's a friend or 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 our neighbor or somebody we know, you know, I always go on social media. I'm, you know, I'm one of those guys like I re- I respond to everybody. Mm-hmm. I might have a whole bunch of messages, and I'll respond to everybody. I try to respond to everybody, but if I see something on there and I say something about, you know, um, I want to hurt myself or something, I I reach out to those people. Even the, if I know you that you know, if I know you as a friend. Or a Facebook friend, mm-hmm. you know, a Facebook friend. We don't really know you. Yeah. We don't know each other. We never met in person. Mm-hmm. But I'll take my time out to be like, "Hey, man, you good?" Yeah. And man, I, I good. think that we should all reach out to people like that, you know. But uh, Anthony Bourdain, man, wow, that was a that was a total blow to us, yeah. man. I mean, you know, anybody in the in the food industry, anybody period that watches shows, mm-hmm. he really changed um, uh, cooking channels and and the way he did his life. I mean, you got all these shows. You got other what what is that other chef's name? Uh, oh. Um, Gordon, Gordon, uh, Gordon, Gordon, yeah, 
he's full of shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's, he's, you know. The, the whole show. Could I cuss? Could I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Gordon no, Ramsay? No, yeah. He's light. full of shit. You know what? I mean. And he's probably one of the most uh, successful, popular he is. TV chefs he around. Is. He right? is. He is. You know, he might cook up a, a, a great steak and cook up a great meal. But in my world, in my mind, he's full of shit, you know. You don't you don't scream and yell at somebody and cuss somebody out. You 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 mentor them. You know, if somebody's not doing the right thing, you mentor them and say, "Hey, listen, this is how you do it." Or something. What he's doing, he's doing it for ratings. Okay, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. Yeah. But in reality, you don't you don't. Somebody's cooking. Somebody comes up. Say, I get this young kid that's eighteen years old, out of culinary school. Hey, I want to learn how to cook. All right, come on. I'm not going to scream and yell at him and call him a dumbass, call him this, call him that. I'm going to teach him the right ways. Hey, this is how you do this. Don't put your hand here. Don't do this. Don't do that. Add a little of this. Yeah. You know, my, my saying goes to everybody that's always worked with us. You can always add, but you can never take out. Mm -hmm. So if you add salt, you can always add. But if you put too much, you can't take it out. Yeah. You ruin the meal. So by being humbled and, and, and teaching people, I think that's a great chef. Somebody that screams and yells and cusses and, and gets in your face and calls you a dumbass. That's not a real chef. That's just TV ratings. TV ratings. Yeah. TV ratings. So Anthony Bourdain, we'll get back to Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain was just a humble human being that loved, loved food. He loved to go out there. He loved to be in the world. And just for him to, you know, for him to go out there and sit down in a little town and just sit with a bunch of strangers, mm -hmm. that, that, that's a chef. That's yeah. to me, that's badass, man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's, he's definitely going to be missed. And, uh, it was an impact on my life, honestly. Yeah. If there was one person besides Guy, I love Guy because Guy's he's hot air. He's love, you know. He's he's yeah. got a great attitude. But Anthony was just freaking humble human being, mm -hmm. and that's how I see it. Yeah, you know, just he'll he'll definitely deeply be, be missed. You know. Yeah. Um, you said that when when you started, a lot of people laughed at you and stuff. What would you want to leave behind, or? to motivate someone who is being laughed at for doing what they love. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's sad because whatever you do in life, nobody should laugh at you. Nobody should put you down, no matter what you do. If you're but gonna they be, do. Yeah, they do. And you'll have that. Let, let's say you're going to go out there oh, yeah. and sell oranges, mm -hmm. and that's going to be your job. You know what? I applaud people. When somebody gets a new car, I don't put them down. I look at them and go, hey, man, that's a nice car. Good for you, brother. Right. Good for you. Someone's going to start a business. I, I give them, and my wife can tell you that. She, she'll tell you that, that I, I give people props where props is due. You yeah. know what I mean? I give people the respect that they deserve. Mm -hmm. You know, And I go out there and I try to, I'm that guy. I, I'm that motivator. I like to tap people on the shoulder and go, hey, good job, man. That yeah. was good. You know, because it's happened to me. It's happened to me. Uh, recently, if I if I may add, recently I lost a uh, we lost a uh, a friend of ours, mm -hmm. an old boss of mine, by the name of Aki Aki Urakawa, and I used to work for him. I worked for him for seven years at a company called Cafco in the city of Los Angeles mm -hmm. in Vernon, and he recently passed away from cancer. Yeah, and uh, I remember working for him and him. He was a hard ass. He really was, man. He was screaming and yelling and cussing me out and stuff. Yeah. But I appreciate that from him. You know, I really did. At the end of the day, he felt bad. And he'd come up to me and put his hand around my shoulder. I felt like shit at the time. But now I know why he did that. Yeah. Because I, I had a gift. My personality and my things to go, go out there and, and make it happen. And I didn't think I was good enough for that. And he would always tell me. You, you weren't working up to your potential. He I was, was trying to get it out of exactly, you. Exactly. Exactly. So at the end of the day, you know, I'd be feeling like crap. Like, fuck, I'm a piece of shit. I'm, a, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not good enough for this. I'm yeah. not good enough for that. He would come up and put his hand on my shoulder and go, you know what? Good job. You did a good job. And that 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 one word, or oh, two words, right? Two words, good job. Yeah. Good job. Made me feel freaking 10 feet tall, bro. Yeah. I yeah. felt my heads were in the clouds. I felt good, you know? Yeah. It felt great. And all he had to do was come up to me and go, Jimmy, good job. Yeah. And tap me on the shoulder. I'd be like, oh, thanks, Aki. And he'd walk away. And, I, and I'd like, I'd, I'd put a smile on my face. Oh, yeah. So I learned from him. No matter what the the situation is or whatever, you give people props for props is due. Now, when people laugh at you for anything, it, it it's a shame, dude. You know, you know, these are jealous people. These are people that don't have anything better. 
they see me and my wife out there and we're hustling, we're doing our thing. And, 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 and some of them probably look at them and go, man, look at what they're doing. I wish we were doing something like that. Yeah. You know, husband and wives right now, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of husband and wives, they don't do anything at all. Yeah. Their husbands are out partying with their friends on every weekend. Their wives are hanging out with their girlfriends, drinking wine. Yeah. You know, they're not united. They're not co- uh, t- together. So to me, I say, you know what? My legacy, I want people to know that I was humbled, that I was, you know, appreciated of everything. Everything in my, everything in my life is appreciated. My yeah. kids, my wife, my you guys, you know, me being here, I'm appreciated for that. You know, I'm loved. I feel great. I feel something just, just spread the love, you know. And yeah. and and my legacy is just to know that that I loved what I did, and I love to serve people, and I love to to be around people. I'm a people person. I love, to, dude. I can walk into a crowd. I can walk into say. A room full of 100 people. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to everybody that night. Yeah. And I'm going to give out a business card because that's what I do. Yeah. And I'm a people person. My dad taught me that. Yeah. I want to just leave a, a good impression on everybody that, hey, that guy was cool. Yeah. yeah. Whether I want to or not, I want them to know that. You know, and, and like I always tell my kids, man, you know, love, give love, show love, give respect, all that stuff. You know, it all comes down to it, you know. You talk to somebody, you, you, you shake their hand, look them in the eye, mm-hmm. tell them thank you. Yeah. When somebody gives you something, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Just show respect because you're driving in traffic. The guy lets you in. Put your hand up or put your hand out the window. Thank you. Yeah. That little thank you, that can make somebody's day. Yeah. There's a homeless guy on the street. I hate to use the word homeless. There's an unfortunate person on the street asking for change. You know what I do? I roll down my window whether I have change or not. Hey, how you doing, boss? What's going on, man? How's your day going? Yeah. Oh, it's going okay, man. You know, yeah, the struggle is real. I hear you, brother. Give them that. Give them that couple seconds of your time. Yeah. Because everybody else is passing them up, like they up. don't live, uh, they don't survive. You give them that minute, that can make that person's day, dude. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They might be going through something mentally in their mind that they want to end their life, but you just made their day just a little bit better. Yep. And that's what I want people to know from me, that I'm a loving person. I'm a God. You know. You know. I'm a person of God. I love. To give back yeah that's just me yeah you know it's what i like to do man so i'll tell you that's a great message i mean that's 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 something that we should all practice in, in, yeah. in our in our day-to-day so looks like you're doing a lot of good things jimmy <laughs> you know you got you got you keep going and going and going nothing's stopping you right now no, man you, man, you're I'm working a, up to something and it's great i just just everything in life man it's just it's you know, like they say, I, and I, I want to go back. I know you speak, don't speak Spanish, but that's fine. I mean, a lot, my kids don't speak Spanish. I understand it. No, my kids don't speak Spanish. <laughs> and it's, it's sad because, but la vida es un regalo. Mm-hmm. It's a gift. And, and, and use it wisely. Use it beautifully. Don't, don't take advantage of it. I, you know, I, I go on YouTube and I see, these, uh, I see all these things going on in the world and these people killing other people for no reason. And I think, why are you going to waste your time doing that? Why, why, why would you do that? You know, yeah. you, you were given life. Use it wisely. Use, make it to the best of your knowledge. Make it to the best that you can. In li- just make it the mm-hmm. best. Right. Don't don't go out there and do drugs. Uh, you know, we all go. We all had our problems. You know, I'm not yeah. I'm not an innocent guy. I grew up in the hood. Yeah. And I had my problems, but I I survived that. And I thank my wife for that. And I'm gonna give her a shout out for that, because when I had my darkest moments in my life, she was there for me. So, yeah. I appreciate that. That's good. So well, it really, seems like you you have everything pretty much in order you know it seems like everything's going good oh, you yeah. know um what do you have coming up i know there's uh, a july july 29th uh event right at the smp yeah. uh restaurant i'm sorry i'm just a little choked up right now <laughs> uh, that's right. yeah i just get a little choked up because yeah. i'm a real i'm a real person man yeah. I just, you know I, just, I speak from the heart of course i don't i don't i don't lie in something but anyways uh shout out to my wife thank you for everything shout out seal seal um so I'm doing a culinary fight club. Yeah. September. Uh, J- September. Jan- January. No, July twenty. July twenty ninth. Okay, let me repeat that. Yeah. July 29th, I'm doing a, a culinary fight club in the city of Santa uh, Santa Fe Springs. It's uh, it's called SMP. Sport. Restaurant sports and bar, sports bar, right? Yeah, sports bar mm-hmm. and grill. And uh, there's six chefs. Uh, there are six chefs and uh, one winner. And yeah, so I'm part of that event. Nice. And we'll be doing that. Um, it's like a, uh, it's like a chopped show, like mm-hmm. kind of like chopped, yeah. where you kind of walk in. Oh, it's like a like a contest. Yeah, it's a oh, contest. that's cool. And it's gonna be what filmed. Did, wait, what did you think the culinary fight club would be? Like an underground thing. 
You thought they were actually gonna fight? <laughs> like no. Like we're gonna a bunch, of, bunch of dudes in aprons just with gonna knives. Go with knives. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. And if it's your first night, <laughs> you have to fight. Yeah, we're, we're gonna uh, put food all over us and just go out in the ring. <laughs> oh, no. I just didn't put two and two together. I don't know. <laughs> so the culinary fight club. Yeah, so you guys are just gonna like chop. You guys get all these ingredients, put them together. So basically, what they're gonna do, is, uh, from what I'm, what I understand, we're gonna get uh, 45 seconds to get our protein, run back to our table, put our protein down, and then we're gonna get a few seconds to go and get our our produce, and then run back, and after after everything's said and done, we have an hour to cook. Sig- Anything you want, or is there a specific thing it, that you no, have to it's cook? No, it's it's a taco showdown. Oh, okay, taco. Nice. So it's a taco showdown. So it's gonna be. Oh, this is a great part. You're going to love this, but I'll get back to that real quick. So it's going to be an hour to cook, six chefs, one winner. So nice. I, I I think I got this. Nice. I, I'm, uh, <laughs> well, we'll definitely be rooting for you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure. I, I'm up against some pretty stiff competition. I mean, we got a couple guys in there that I saw, and I'm like, hmm, I know who these guys are. I know what they're all about. So, yeah. But I've got my style. Are these guys local guys around here that yeah. you kind of – Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. There's a few guys on there. You can see their names on the flyer. You can see who they are. And – um so I I looked at the flyers. I mean, I looked at the at, at some of the guys that I'm up against, and I'm like, wow, okay, yeah. shoot, I'm up against this guy. I'm up against that guy, but I'm not I'm not I'm not fearing him. I'm gonna go in there with the stri- all the confidence, all the confidence in the world, and 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 if I win, heck yeah, and if I win, you know, it's okay. Yeah, I was part of it, but I want to come out a winner, and I'm going with the mentality that I'm gonna win this event because. I kick ass on doing tacos, man. Yeah. You know, I kick ass, and let me tell you something. Anybody can do a taco. Anybody, yeah. you can put a taco together any which way you can, but making it taste good and making it come out great—that's a whole different story. There so, you go. You know, so we got that on the July 29th on a Sunday. Tickets are available right now. You got forty dollar tickets, but if you go through me, you get them at twenty five dollars. Oh, there you go. And where can they reach you at? Uh, okay, so real quick, check this out. So twenty five dollar tickets, half price. Uh, you, you call me up and I give you a code and you go on the line. So you get an hour of free food and free booze for an hour. Damn. At twenty five dollars, um, I mean you can't beat that. No, you can't. Twenty five bucks all you can bucks. eat for an hour yeah, and booze. Yeah. yeah, it's great. At a at a cool place with music and everything. Yeah. So you guys can reach me online. I'm on Facebook at Jimmy Sauces on Facebook, or you can reach me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Yelp at Up and Smoke Tacos. All right. And those are all our sh- my social medias, and you guys can reach me on those and uh, message me or. Yeah, just private message me and I'll, I'll definitely get back to you guys. I get oh, back to everybody. Cool. We're definitely gonna add all those links to yeah. the uh, to the YouTube, to Instagram, and we'll you know we'll, everybody yeah. will make we'll make sure that everybody contacts you and then know how to contact you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, for sure. Well, Jimmy, thank you for your time, man. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. If I can just say a quick little shout out, of course, out, is yes, that okay? sir. Yeah, of course. Uh, all right. I just want to thank everybody out there that has supported us through the years. I mean, we have a lot of people that have supported us, and even the new supporters that have come up to us. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, the bottom of my wife's heart. I know she feels the same way. Um, everybody out there that that's that's given us that 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 drive. I want to thank Vicky Roca, Frank, Raul. I want to thank my kids. I want to thank my mother, my brothers, my sisters, my nieces and nephews because they've yeah. always been there for me. Yep. Uh, my mother-in-law, Linda. You know, my father-in-law. Pepe, you know, they believed in us, and my father-in-law has a, a big inspiration on us. You know, he, he had a restaurant in Boston for years, and um, he, 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 he loved what I did, and he gave me good pieces of advice and stuff. So, I, Pepe, muchas gracias por todo tu apoyo, you know, and, and Linda, everybody else out there. And, uh, yeah, just everybody out there that just yeah. gave us the, the drive to continue and to go forward. And, and to this day, he still gives us that, that drive, you know. That makes it happen. That makes Up and Smoke Tacos continue to roll. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for that. God bless them. God Perfect. bless themselves. Rocio, is anything else? You're good? Yeah, we're good. We're good? <laughs> hey, since we're doing shout outs, I want to thank uh, a shout out to uh, Matia, my aunt Maria. She's oh, the yeah. one that hooked us up together. Oh, yeah, right Maria. There. Oh, yeah. I never, I never, how do you? That, never, we we, we kind of missed that, but that's your, Rocio, that's your comadre? That's Rocio's comadre. Rocio, come oh, quick, okay. Why don't you come into the uh, frame? Come right on, here. come in, come on, come on. Um, but yeah, so. My aunt Maria, um, I never called her aunt. I call her Maria. She's like, I don't call my aunt. So she's like fifteen, year, what, 15 she's, years. She's, old she's young. She's young. She's young. She she looks she looks like, she looks like my age. She looks like I'm you know thirty six. Yeah, yeah. She's young, um, but yeah, she's the one that connected us together. But um, they've known each other for Definitely. years, man. Uh, I think what Rocio, you went to school with her, right? Yes, elementary. Elementary school. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Elementary. Farmdale Elementary yeah. in L.A. Mm-hmm. She's in nice. Sereno. Is that in Sereno? Sereno. That's where she grew up, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Well, I lived on Badeau Avenue, and she lived on Ballard. Yeah. Ballard Street. So, I mean, yeah, that's so that's where we got the intro. I've known Jimmy maybe 15 or 20 years, maybe? Probably longer than that, Maybe yeah. longer, because yeah. I know, I mean, your kids were really young. Yeah, they were really small. Baby. Babies. Yeah, yeah babies. Dang. So and, and, and a real quick uh, shout-out to my compa Dero. Ese cabrón. Dario. <laughs> Dario. <laughs> Pinchy, Dario. Yeah, yeah. You'll get your 15%, cabrón. Don't worry about <laughs> it. I always mess with them about that. But, no, nah, he's a good guy. They're all, you know what, what I like about Everybody in the circle that we all know, Maria, Daryl, yeah. you know, your, your Chata, Joe, everybody, Rosa, everybody, yeah. they're all family, man. And they, you guys accepted me as a family member to mm-hmm. the family, so I appreciate that. I mean, you know, like I said, man, uh, every time I go see you guys, it's always uh, hugs and, and, and of course, uh, yeah. hugs and, and, and just ex- acceptance. Yep. So, well, now you're family to How We Talk. How We Talk podcast, how we all talk. one word. Yeah. How well, we talk. I want to say it's an honor to be here. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you for the little sharing the story, man. That was awesome. Of course, man. Very cool. Very we look cool. forward to seeing you uh, in, in, in all your other ventures. Thank you. Yeah. All right, man. And with that, we say adios. Adios. Uh, click the subscribe button over there. Share, review. You guys uh, spread the love and look out for more episodes coming soon. Yep. Later. That's it. Bye.